This is Audible. Alien Prince's Mate, an Azim novel, written by Lisa Lace, narrated by Paul Bryan and Kelly Morgan. Chapter One, Priya. I'm sorry about your test results. The lovely young blonde woman looked like she wished she could say something else. She must have already been approved to be one of the chosen women, which meant she wasn't a carrier of the gene. Women weren't allowed to work on any part of the project if they had it. She didn't have to apologize for something she couldn't control, and she didn't know how helpless I felt. I shook my head. Don't worry about it. It's not your fault. Staring at the ground, I turned away and started walking, trying to move as quickly as I could in the direction of the upscale testing center's glass doors. I knew she didn't have anything personal against me, but I felt like she didn't want me either. It was just the way Jerry had rejected me because I wasn't rich enough, wasn't beautiful enough, and wasn't good enough to be a doctor's wife. Apparently, he needed someone who was better eye candy. He had broken up with me in the blink of an eye after nearly a year of dating. It was a year of my life flushed down the toilet. Failing the test brought up uncomfortable feelings about Jerry. If I managed to leave this place within a minute or so, I might not burst into tears in front of everyone and embarrass myself. I reached out to push the door, but it swung open before I could touch it. Someone came through it so quickly that he ran into me. I would have fallen on my ass if he hadn't wrapped an arm around me and pulled me tightly against him. I breathed in his scent as he held me a little longer than necessary. For some reason, I didn't mind. Who was this guy? I pushed him away and stepped back, looking up at his face. He was considerably taller than me, dirty blonde, well-muscled, and unbelievably gorgeous. But he had almost knocked me over. I had to say something. You should watch where you're going. I was still upset about being rejected by the testing center, and I couldn't help injecting some venom into my voice. My options at this point were either copping attitude or bursting into tears. He had been staring at me, but his expression quickly turned into a frown. I'm sorry. It was an accident. I shrugged. Next time, don't burst through the door. Maybe you should watch where you're going. I caught you. His brown eyes filled with heat. I felt myself blushing in response. I was starting to get annoyed. Excuse me, it's a door. I'm trying to go through it. He was still blocking my way with his big, beautiful body. He didn't bother answering me. He stepped to the side, staring me down. I heard the blonde's cheerful voice behind me. Alex, is that you? I twisted my head as I went through the door and saw Alex hug and kiss her on the cheek. Who else would it be? Are you finished for the night? His voice was happier now. The woman was probably his girlfriend. Yep, she's the last one. I pushed my way out the door without looking back, wiping furiously at my eyes. All my hopes were being dashed today, but no matter how bad the news was, I wasn't going to burst into tears at the testing facility in front of those people. It had been stupid to hope I could fly off into the stars as part of the test to see if human women were compatible with the Azim. It was childish to want to leave Earth in the first place. My middle-class family would never be able to afford to buy a ticket on a starship. But I had dreams. I wanted to leave my overcrowded planet and have a fresh start somewhere. I wanted a new adventure. Nothing of the sort was going to happen now. The Azim wouldn't even look at a woman who had the gene. The hunky guy over there wouldn't even touch me if he knew the truth. Of course, that kind of man would never look at a girl like me in the first place. I understood they had rules, but it didn't seem fair. I must have been distracted by my tears and mental state. I acted carelessly. I didn't notice the two men following me. I wasn't in a particularly bad part of town, but it wasn't completely safe for a woman to be alone either. The sun had recently set. It wasn't dark enough for the streetlights to turn on, but it was just dark enough to make criminals more confident. The men caught up with me and pushed me into an alley. 
The taller one spoke first. Hey, beautiful. We have a problem we think you might be able to fix. He shoved me against the building, hitting my head against the wall and holding me there. You look like maybe you have a lot of credits saved up. Maybe you can transfer some of them to us. No. I heard the trembling in my voice. I didn't want to look afraid in front of them. I have nothing. Sorry. I just used the last of them. I didn't even have to lie about my finances. Applying to the Azim program was expensive, and it had taken almost all my savings. So you don't have any loose credits? The other started leering at me. You'll have to pay us another way. They weren't going to let me go unless I gave them something. I was wrong. I have a few. Here you go. The taller man smiled. That's more like it. I felt like crying, thinking about what those credits could have bought me. But it's not enough. Think of it as a down payment. It will take more than that to satisfy us. The other man started to lift my shirt. Fuck you! I kicked my foot wildly, finding nothing but air. The more I struggled, the tighter they pinned me down. The taller man cried out when my next kick connected with his shin. You little bitch! You're going to pay for that! He backhanded me across the face, causing my head to snap to the side. My eyes welled up, but I refused to let a single tear fall. I heard shouting from the other end of the alleyway. Someone had spotted me and was trying to help. Shit! As soon as their grip around me loosened, I twisted away and dashed down the alley. I hoped there was a way out at the end. They screamed at me to stop. I heard the sound of their feet running after me. The adrenaline helped me run faster than I knew I could, and I emerged on the same street as the testing center. I couldn't decide where to go or what to do in my terrified state. I just kept running as fast as I could. Maybe the testing center was still open. As I got closer, I could see it was closed. The lights were off, and I couldn't see anyone moving inside. I ran around the building and spotted a small empty shuttle. I moved to the far side and pressed the open button. I nearly collapsed in relief when the door lifted. Whoever owned the ship was careless. The sound of running stopped when the men came around the corner of the building. I scrambled inside before they noticed me. I locked the door behind me and hid in the storage compartment farthest away from the door. I tried to stop breathing, inhaling air slowly through my nose. The air smelled stale and a little musty. I could hear the men talking outside, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. I crouched in the shuttle and waited for something to happen. When their voices faded away, I stayed on the ship, worried they were trying to trick me. If they weren't waiting around for me, I was going to have a car pick me up and take me home. I wasn't walking anywhere after what just happened to me. After five minutes, I couldn't wait any longer. I had to look around and see if I was alone. I was starting to wonder about the ship, too. I hadn't seen anything like it before on Earth. What if it was an Azim shuttle used by the testing center? If the Azim discovered a human on one of their ships, they would be much angrier than a couple of thugs in an alley. I stood up and was about to open the compartment when I heard different voices coming toward the shuttle. I thought I left the door unlocked. Anders, Earth is far from the safest planet around. You should make sure everything is secure. You don't want Father to get angry, do you? I opened the door of the compartment a little and peeked out. The guy who ran into me at the testing center was speaking. I know, I just forget sometimes. I was supposed to lock it, but I didn't. What I'm wondering is why it's locked now. You don't remember anything. Locked, unlocked, it's all the same to you. Let's get out of here and fly back to the mothership. I need to stretch my... Not here, Alex! We're far from any humans. No one can hear us. Our orders are to avoid discussing certain topics when we're not on the mothership. We're not supposed to take any unnecessary risks. Fine, have it your way. Alex looked annoyed. I couldn't show myself no matter how worried I was. If they found me, they would have caught me in a criminal act. <laughs>
It was better for me to stay hidden. When the shuttle returned to Earth, I could sneak out without anyone noticing me. My day was going from bad to worse. There wasn't any padding in the storage compartment, but there were straps for immobilizing freight. I worked with the lines and buckles available to strap myself in before the shuttle lifted off the ground. It was my first time off the planet. My trip was illicit, and I would be coming back to Earth soon, but I still felt a stab of excitement rush through my body. I hadn't even been in a low orbit for a Parabol game. Leaving gravity behind was a new experience for me. Anders spoke again. I'm going on a scouting mission when we get back. That sounds incredibly boring. Have you managed to convince Father to buy your precious fighters yet? Alex looked gorgeous. Not yet, but he'll come around. The pilot sounded frustrated. Some of the sectors we're passing through are dangerous. There aren't any laws in this section of the galaxy. Are you worried about space pirates? It seems like a remote possibility, Anders. If I wasn't concerned, I wouldn't insist and fight with Father about it. The ship shuddered. We're here, Alex. Perfect landing as usual. Thanks. I'll see you later. I heard belts unbuckling. Do you think you're going back down again before we leave? Yes, Jane has a few more things I have to pick up for her. This shuttle is due for maintenance, so I'm going to take another one down. There aren't any other shuttles in here. They're in another docking bay. We're in maintenance. Jane and Arnon are arriving on one of the last shuttles. Jane said she wants to spend more time with her family before she leaves for an alien world. I'm glad she's coming with us, Alex. It's going to be wonderful having a woman in the family again. I always wanted a sister. Was Alex marrying Jane? Only understanding half their conversation was giving me a headache. You have, haven't you? Four brothers weren't enough for you. You know it's not the same thing, Alex. Have a safe flight, brother. Thanks, Anders. You too. I heard the doors open and close, and the shuttle fell silent. Maintenance didn't sound promising. I would have to find another shuttle to take me back to Earth. I hoped the docking bay was close to the maintenance bay. I worried my innocent act of hiding from my attackers would turn into a bigger problem than I had imagined. But I was confident I would find a way back to Earth. I had no idea how to find the docking bay, but I would figure it out. I had less confidence in myself after I had spent a day hiding out and sneaking around trying to find the docking bay. I was hungry. There was water in the bathroom, so I wasn't getting dehydrated, but I needed to find something to eat. I had done a project once on transport class starships in school. I had been obsessed with spacecraft bringing people all the way across the galaxy. These ships used similar design patterns. The living quarters were on the top, with service levels like the elusive docking bay beneath. Food and greenhouse levels were next, and after that came the engines, heating, and waste levels. If I wanted to ease my hunger, the greenhouses were the place to go. Transporters were everywhere, but I wasn't going to risk using one. The Azim had a transporter accident in the past and installed emergency stairs on all their space vessels. I had seen a stairwell while sneaking around in the middle of the night. The problem with transporters was that they recorded information about the people who used them, and I needed to stay off the grid. I had managed to avoid other people so far. There weren't many, which made me suspect the starship wasn't leaving for a while. With luck, I would have time to find some food and the docking bay before it departed. After climbing down a seemingly never-ending flight of stairs, I found myself roaming around the darkened bowels of the ship. I hadn't passed a greenhouse, but I managed to find a room filled with dried food. I ripped open a bunch of packages and began stuffing my face while squatting on the floor of a dimly lit storeroom closet. The engines roared as I ate my meal. They were probably a floor or two below me. I felt the deck move as they kicked into high gear, and I froze in place with a protein bar halfway to my mouth. You could only hear Starship engines when they were running at full power during takeoff. When the ship was sitting still or in motion, it required little power to keep it going. 
firing up an enormous ship like a transport took a lot of energy. The only reason the engines would be so loud was if the ship was leaving Earth. I was trapped, and I had become an illegal stowaway. Everything changed for me when the engines started. I was never going home again. Chapter 2 Alex Are you telling us we've mated with human women who aren't part of the program? And many are already pregnant? Arnon had called a meeting of the brothers, and we were sitting around a conference table as the ship careened through space at something close to light speed. A view screen in the room showed the black of outer space, but it didn't do anything to quell my feeling of betrayal. I stared at Arnon blankly. I imagined my brothers were frowning at him as well. Arnon gave us a fake smile. It's a good thing, right? And there are more couples in the bonding stage right now. Soon more children will be born, and we'll have the first generation of females who will save the Azim from extinction. We weren't impressed. How is it possible? Avery looked bewildered. Arnon dropped his attempt at a smile. Our father and Earth's president agreed to the trial to please the public. In a secret meeting, they arranged to send additional women covertly soon after we left Earth. How's Jane taking the news? Anders shook his head sadly. Arnon closed his eyes. You don't want to know. She was supposed to be in charge of the entire operation. I can't believe father did this behind our backs. Avery slammed his fist into the table. The black look on his face didn't make him appear any less handsome. We didn't get along with our father, but one thing I appreciated was that he provided the genetic code that made us all incredibly good-looking. It was almost unfair that there were so many attractive males in a single family, but we couldn't help it. Arnon was tall with dark hair and eyes. Avery was his exact opposite, blonde and devilishly gorgeous. Anders had a wiry build, with messy brown hair and a who-gives-a-shit attitude. Avrin had long brown hair which was always falling in his eyes. He managed to look like an intellectual, even without glasses. I was blonde, like Airy, and tall, like Arnon. I had brown eyes, and I liked what I saw when I looked in the mirror. Well, he is the king. He can do whatever he wants. Avrin was always the voice of reason. Did he tell you at least, Arnon? We all turned to look at our oldest brother. He dropped his eyes and shook his head. That's sneaky, even for father. Anders looked shocked. He was even more determined than he let on. The more I thought about our father and his decisions, the angrier I became. He should have consulted with us. Arnon was carefully keeping his face expressionless. I knew he must have been furious when he discovered important decisions had been made without his input. Arnon was the firstborn, and our father typically consulted with him or kept him informed about critical issues. I only learned about this because I accidentally overheard father talking with Earth's president. What are we going to do about it? Anders trailed off. He didn't want to suggest anything before hearing Arnon's position. Nothing. I just wanted you all to know, so you aren't surprised when we make an official announcement about the babies. I know everyone here can do the math. You would have figured it out without me, and I didn't want you thinking I kept anything from you. The more I thought about our father's deception, the angrier I became. What a bastard! Arnon turned to me. Alex, I've been meaning to talk to you about something. I'm right here. Don't be shy. I felt wary seeing the look on my brother's face. You need to make up with him. The resentment you're carrying around is consuming you. Hey, I'm not the only one mad at him. I hadn't expected those words to come out of Arnon's mouth. I looked around for support, but I didn't find any. You were all angry too. I think you know what I mean. You're the only one of us who never talks to him. If anyone mentions him, you get so angry that you nearly burst into flames. I don't like my father. 
I tried to avoid looking petulant. Lots of people are in the same situation as me. Anders stood up. He's right, Alex. But the thing is, we don't care about lots of people. We care about you. We don't want to see you destroy yourself. Are you sure I'm the one who has the problem? He abandoned us. He checked out and stopped being our father. Arnon nodded, his eyes sad. You felt it more than any of us because you were young. Alex, holding a grudge against him is hurting you, not him. Let it go. We're all concerned about you. I glanced around the table and saw the other three nodding. It was annoying that they were all on the same page. I felt a familiar frustration rising in me as I stared at Arnon. The stupid thing was that I agreed with him. The problem, though, was him telling me what to do again, like always. I loved all my brothers more than anything. We were close and always had each other's backs. In a sense, all we had was one another. When the virus devastated our population, and all the women on Azim died, including our mother, our family nearly fell apart. I was two years old when she died. I never knew her. I grew up around boys and men. By the time I was old enough to understand the tragedy afflicting our people, all the women in our family were already gone. The remaining females weren't anywhere I could interact with them. They were already patients in hospitals. My oldest brother Arnon was old enough to have memories of our mother before she died. Sometimes I was jealous of my siblings because they knew her. Even Avrin had a few memories. Not me. My family was always sad. From the time I understood sorrow, I had seen it in my brothers. My first memory was when I gave Arnon one of my stuffed animals. I had found him crying because he missed our mother. He had smiled and hugged me. Soon I had turned into the model child, trying to please my father too, although he was impossible to satisfy. I was always thinking about my brothers and trying anything I could to make them happy. Arnon was the one who had pulled our family together. I would always be grateful, but I didn't like that they ordered me around. I knew I was the youngest one in the family. Sometimes my youth worked out for me. My brothers have always helped me and protected me from harm. Their advice prevented me from failing many times. The virus was going to render all the Aussie males infertile. None of us would be able to reproduce in a couple of years. If we didn't intervene, our race was going to die out. Our plight had shaped my life in more ways than I cared to count. It's why I decided to become a healer, so I could help people recover from viruses instead of dying from them. It's why I've lived on a starship for most of my life, trying to find an elusive group of women to help save us from extinction. My entire life felt like a trap, and the desire for everyone around me to have peace felt like a noose around my neck. I've heard that you can't please everyone, but I've tried. I longed for a mother, but I couldn't empathize with my brothers because I didn't miss her. I had stared at her picture for hours, wishing I could talk to her. Finally, I understood I never would, and eventually stopped hoping for something that would never happen. Trying to make people happy had remained part of my character and made my life difficult. For years I thought pleasing my father would make him pay attention to me, but it never worked. He never noticed me no matter what I did. I ended up furious with him. He refused to give me what I needed when I was a boy, and it left a gaping hole in my heart. I knew I should stop saying yes to everyone and stand up for myself. I needed to start making my own decisions. It was easier said than done, especially at moments like these. Of course I will, Arnon. The feeling of being trapped and forced to do something I didn't want to do nearly suffocated me. I managed to suppress it. I shouldn't feel like this, but I couldn't help it. He breathed a sigh of relief and his shoulders dropped. Thanks, Alex. You won't regret it. I nodded. Arnon changed the subject. Are you guys all coming for dinner on Sunday? Ever since he married Jane, we had gathered at their place every Sunday to eat. An affirmative chorus rang out around the table. 
I had to go. Yes, of course. I made myself smile. My family would be upset if I missed a single meal. It was frustrating to feel like I was being forced to do something I actually wanted to do. I liked spending time with my brothers and their wives. I never knew I would like children before we had some in the family, but I really enjoyed my niece and nephew. Great. We love having you over. Arnon was about to move on when he turned his head back and looked at me again. Are you sure you're okay? I tried to make my enthusiasm sound genuine. I'm fine. I can't wait for Sunday. Okay, he clapped me on the shoulder. I wanted to make sure everyone understood. We left after some handshaking and small talk. I headed down the beige corridors to my apartment thinking about Sundays. I wondered when I would get used to being around women on Sundays. I envied Anders and his job as a starship pilot. Every day he got to work with Gwen, his pilot partner. I couldn't imagine spending as much time with a woman as he did. There had been a female lab attendant and a few nurses and doctors over the years, but they never stayed for long. In my world, there were only men. We needed the project with Earth to succeed so we could have women back in our lives. People weren't supposed to live without women. I loved everything about women. Their looks, different ways of thinking, and intelligence. I had a couple of girlfriends, but things were never serious. Once we started roaming the galaxy looking for women to help repopulate our world, there hadn't been room for anyone in my life. Avery and Anders went looking for women they could fool around with on every planet. A lot of women passed through their quarters. They didn't fuck them, but Airy always said you could have a lot of fun without going all the way. People from Ozim mated for life. The first time we fuck, we bond with a woman. Everything worked out if the man was in love with the woman. But if they weren't in love, they risked getting bond rejection syndrome, an illness that could lead to madness. One night stands weren't part of our vocabulary. Still, Airy and Anders would do almost anything except fuck a woman. Not me. The idea of fooling around with a stranger for a single night didn't appeal to me. I hadn't been with a woman for a long time. I would have liked to, of course. I had been attracted to some of the women I had met since my last girlfriend, but I had never let things progress. It didn't make sense. I knew I wasn't in love with them. There was no point in dating someone I couldn't love. I was waiting for my soulmate. It was a little hokey, but I tried not to tell anyone. A woman was waiting for me, someone with whom I could do everything. There was no point in messing around with someone who wasn't her. Dating infrequently wasn't a big deal. The Azim were masters of self-control. I knew my right hand pretty well, or sometimes my left for variety. But what was I supposed to do? I wasn't a monk who could transmute sexual energy into enlightenment. I had to release the pressure somehow. It was hard watching Arnon and Airy with their wives. Seeing them around each other was bringing out my desire for a woman. My thoughts returned to what Arnon had asked me. I could never forgive my father. Chapter 3 Alex I washed up and went home after my shift using the transporter because I was tired. Avern had messaged me, asking if I wanted to have dinner with him. Most of the time, I happily ate with my brother, even though he was a little quiet. I didn't want any company tonight. As I walked into my quarters, I felt frustrated and trapped. I was sick of my life. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew it wasn't this. I probably seemed like an ungrateful bastard. I had everything anyone could want. I was a doctor. I had my brothers around me, and we had found women to help us repopulate our planet. But it wasn't enough for me. I wanted something more, and I would know what it was when I saw it. I felt compelled to hide from everyone. I didn't want my brothers passing by and trying to cheer me up. I remember the place Anders and I used for ourselves on level 10. We used to hide there when father was angry with us. 
Nobody knew about it but the two of us. It would be the perfect place to spend the night. No one would bother me down there. I could escape. Tomorrow, I would go back to being a responsible, people-pleasing person. But tonight, I felt like getting away from my life. And when I was stuck on a starship, an unused heating conduit on level 10 was the furthest I could go. I looked at the spot where the door opened into the passageways. It wasn't like I had anything better to do tonight. I had only taken a minute to change before heading to the secret passage. I pressed a particular spot on the wall, and a door silently slid open. The tunnels were barely lit. I climbed in and closed the door behind me. I made my way to a flight of endless stairs leading down to level 10. I thought I knew the precise number of steps to take. Once I started moving down the darkened stairwell, though, I quickly became disoriented. I hadn't bothered to count the steps, so I had no idea how far down I was. The overhead speakers suddenly turned on. Attention, all passengers! Your captain is indisposed at the moment, and I will be assuming his responsibilities. My name is Durkham Haldone, and I am head of the Guild of Private Spacecraft Detention and Reassignment. You might know us as the Scarfaces. The Scarfaces had been all over the news lately. They were supposed to be one of the most ruthless criminal organizations in the galaxy. Their name came from the scars across one of their eyes, which was part of their initiation. We will be detaining your ship until we can reassign all your cargo to new owners. I didn't know why they felt like speaking in code. Maybe it made pirates seem like legitimate businessmen. They were going to steal everything. Fortunately, things could be repurchased. We could easily replace anything of value on the ship. The pirate wasn't finished. You are carrying a lovely cargo which should fetch a high price at the slave markets. As long as you cooperate, we will spare the men's lives. We couldn't replace the women. We needed them. They were going to be our wives and the mothers of our unborn children. They were going to bring back aunts, grandmothers, and girlfriends. They were more precious to us than our own lives. The pirates couldn't have them. But what could I do? My communicator lit up. Ares' face appeared. Alex, get to the panic room! Aery usually looked bored and indifferent, but today he looked anxious. He must have been scared out of his mind. I was about to say yes and follow orders, but I felt something else rising inside of me. Alex, did you hear me? Everyone else is either with me or on the way. Get moving! And why is it so dark there? I was starting to think I didn't want to be in the panic room with the rest of my family. If we were all there, who was going to defend our crew against the pirates? I didn't have a family to lose. I could stay outside and figure out a way to fight. I heard you. I'm not coming. I can be more useful out here. Stop talking nonsense, Alex. Get your ass over here. We don't need to worry about you, too. I wondered who else they were worried about, but they would have to panic by themselves. It was time for my family to seal the panic room without me. You don't need to get worked up about me, Ari. I'll find a place to hide and stay safe. I know this ship like the back of my hand. He frowned. Well, we can't all wait for you to make up your mind. You've got to do something for us if you're out there. It's about Anders. Aery stopped talking and started looking at something I couldn't see. What about Anders? If Avern's here, go ahead and close everything. Aery looked at me again. Alex, I have to go now. You know I won't be able to contact you when we seal the panic room. Anders is... The screen went black. I supposed I wasn't going to learn what Anders was doing for a while. I was glad they shut the door. They might have to worry about me but I was comforted knowing they were all safe. I would do what I could to get rid of the pirate bastards. I wasn't going to watch them sell our women. I had no idea how I could stop them, though. I was only one person. Before I decided on a course of action, 
I needed to get to safety. I kept walking into the darkness until I reached the bottom step. I felt around, pulling a catch which released a door leading out of the secret passageways and into an enormous room filled with heating pipes. Anders and I knew about one that was never used. The largest heating conduits were tall enough to fit a grown man standing up. I could find it even in pitch darkness. I counted the pipes, turning without hesitating. I hadn't been down here for many years, but I remember the path like it was yesterday. An open space in front of a maintenance door led into the conduit. I would have to crawl through the entrance. I opened the door and lowered myself onto my hands and knees to enter before standing up in the shadows. A beautiful, naked pirate waited for me. The image of her nude body burned into my mind. I spent a few seconds ogling her. She gasped, and suddenly she was flying at me, luscious breasts bouncing in the air. How could I be having these thoughts about a pirate at a time like this? I put out my hands to stop her from hitting me, but I didn't notice the length of pipe she carried at her side. When the weapon made contact with my head, my legs buckled and I fell unconscious. Priya The man who crumpled to the floor in front of me wasn't a pirate. He didn't have a scar across one eye like I had seen on the actual pirates. As I looked at him, I realized I knew him. He was the hot guy from the testing center. I had inadvertently attacked an alien man, the one named Alex. I remembered how it had felt when he had held me briefly. My nipples hardened, and it drew my attention to my nakedness. I had been changing after my sponge bath before going to bed on the thin futon. Since there was already furniture here, I was prepared to have a visitor at any moment. But I hadn't seen another soul in the months I had spent hidden aboard the ship. When I had heard the announcement and someone entered my home, it was reasonable for me to assume they didn't have my best interests at heart. The gorgeous guy stirred. I ran for my clothes and put them on in record time. When he groaned and sat up, holding his head, I made sure I was all the way across the room, fully dressed and armed with the pipe. I didn't know what he was doing here, but I wanted him to leave. If he was aware that I existed, he was an enemy. After a minute, he opened his eyes and looked around. As soon as he saw me, he glared. I think you've given me a concussion. Sorry. I'm not sorry, actually. I didn't feel apologetic at all. You shouldn't come into a person's place unexpectedly. I don't know if you have been living under a rock, but pirates have taken over the ship. Do I know you? He drummed his fingers on his thigh. I ran into you at the testing facility, right? What are you doing here? I didn't answer the question. I wanted to stop the wheels from turning in Alex's handsome head. He wasn't going to get the chance to turn me over to the authorities. It feels like that was ages ago. I was surprised he still remembered me. I still remembered him, of course, but he was gorgeous. His type didn't usually notice people like me. I saw the moment he realized what I was. You're a stowaway, aren't you? He looked worried. I didn't try to deny it. My intentions didn't matter. Do you know how much trouble you can get in from being an undocumented passenger on our ship? No, I don't. Why don't you enlighten me? You could go to jail, for starters, or pay a stiff fine. How badly did you want to be part of the trial? I knew there would be consequences, but I didn't have a lot of choices. Not everyone can afford a first-class ticket on a luxury spaceship. I had never met Alex before, but he seemed like the kind of guy who would travel in luxury. Something about him oozed confidence and the entitlement of wealth. That's true, but not everyone decides to smuggle themselves on board either. He didn't seem impressed with my behavior. What are you doing here? Are you ditching your first-class room because the pirates boarded us? I came to hide here. You're in my place. He looked around like he owned the place. I had stayed here since I was forced to make my home on the ship. What do you mean? 
We're in an unused heating conduit. How can you own it? He had a nostalgic look on his face. The only piece of furniture was an abandoned futon I used as a bed. A sturdy metal duct ran along one side of the conduit about waist high. I used it to prepare food and store extra blankets. A black look passed over his face and he glared at me. He was making me feel like I was an intruder in my own home. My brother and I used to play here when we were younger. He had grown up on the ship. For a moment, I thought it was interesting, but that was before I realized I shouldn't be thinking about the entitled asshole in front of me at all. This place used to be yours, but it's mine now. Squatter's rights. Go find another pipe to play in. I motioned him away with my hands. The entire ship belongs to me if you want to get technical. Besides, there isn't another one this size that isn't being used. A thoughtful look appeared on his face. Although, there is an old elevator shaft we stopped using after we installed the transporters. It's cold. There's always a breeze in there. How do you know? I grew up playing in every nook and cranny of this ship. Well, you can't possibly stay here. I put my hands on my hips. He narrowed his eyes. I certainly can. You're the stowaway, not me. I'm afraid you'll have to find another place to sleep. I pressed my lips together. I wondered if he was really going to throw me to the pirates. Do you think it's okay to send me out there? They're going to sell me into slavery. An outraged look appeared on his face, replaced after a moment by resignation. Fine, you win. We're stuck together until we can get the pirates off the ship. The ramifications of sharing a small space with a gorgeous, sexy, and annoying man started to hit me. I glanced at my bed. The futon was barely big enough for one. He followed my gaze. I'll figure something out. Are there still extra blankets? I nodded. I had found 11 clean sheets in a stack and hadn't needed many of them. It was warm down by the heating pipes. I can make a bed on the floor out of those. He started grabbing blankets from the pile. That works for now, I said. What about after the pirates are gone? I'm still going to be here when you go upstairs again. He looked me over. I felt like he was judging me by my appearance. I guess we'll see what happens when it's all over. Sorry, I need to know if you're going to turn me in. I felt afraid for the first time since I hit him with the pipe. Even though he was a stranger, I wasn't scared of him. But if he planned to turn me over to the authorities, I would need to get away from both him and the pirates. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. To me, it sounded like he might report me. I had two problems now. I had to stay away from the pirates and find a new place for myself. It didn't matter if I was attracted to Alex. He was off limits to me. I wasn't in a position to trust him or try to make friends with him. Ever since I left Earth, I had been alone. Alex's presence wasn't going to change anything. I felt more alone now than before he arrived. Chapter 4 Alex The stowaway ended up on the futon. I laid on the floor on a pile of blankets. She turned off the light and we rested in the darkness. Judging by the sound of her breathing, she wasn't going to fall asleep anytime soon. My head ached so badly that I wasn't sure I would be able to sleep at all. My mind wouldn't stop replaying the sight of her naked body which seemed to be burned into my retina. She had full, perky breasts with dark nipples. Her waist narrowed until it swelled into wide hips, perfect for bearing children. We needed babies to save our race. Remembering the triangle of dark hair between her legs made me hard. I couldn't control my mind. I imagined what it would be like to spread her legs. I stopped myself. I needed to think about something else. A criminal was not the woman for me. I didn't even want to fool around with the sort of person who would stow away on a starship. The bulge in my pants betrayed my feelings, but I was determined to think with my brain, not my dick. 
I wasn't going to be swayed by my cock. I had a feeling it wouldn't lead me anywhere I wanted to go. On the other hand, lust was burning in me to the point where I wondered if I needed to go into the darkness of the heating pipes and take care of myself if I wanted to sleep at all. The girl was annoying and kept blaming me for things which were clearly her fault. I hadn't run into her. She was the one who hadn't been looking. It wasn't my fault my head was practically caved in after she hit me with a pipe. In her defense, however, it might have been wise of her to attack me, if she thought I was a pirate. I rolled onto my side, pulling the blankets tightly around me to stop the shivering. It was warm down here during the day, but at night, the temperature of the ship was deliberately dropped to mimic a planet's daily weather pattern. It was pretty cold now. I didn't know how she had survived for months by herself. Anders and I only used this place to get away from father when we were in trouble, and Anders was usually the one in trouble. We never slept down here. The futon was for sitting, not sleeping. We made sure to go home the same day. Even if we got lost, we always found our way home in time for dinner. The girl had to stay here all the time and couldn't leave. She wanted to know if I was going to reveal her existence. Would I? I wasn't sure. If she was breaking an intergalactic law, wasn't turning her in the right thing to do? Things shouldn't be this complicated. So why did it feel like I would be making a mistake? Her voice spoke into the darkness. If you're cold, you can have one of my blankets. I don't need them all. Trust me. It's hard to sleep when you're shivering. Had she been too cold to fall asleep before? Before I could answer her, I felt a blanket hit my chest. Was this how thieves usually acted? My brothers had driven manners into me. Thanks. You're welcome, Alex. I pulled the blanket over me, and it was enough to let me start getting warm. I was comfortably drowsy in a few minutes. As I drifted off to sleep, I wondered how she knew my name. I fell into a deep sleep, upset by the realization that I hadn't bothered to ask for her name. When I opened my eyes, I only saw darkness. I was completely disoriented and didn't know where I was. The first thing I remembered was the woman, the pretty one, the sexy one. The annoying one. I heard the door shut and realized she was leaving. I must have awakened when she moved around in the small space. I wondered what she was doing. It felt like it was too early to wake up. The pirates weren't going to let me take my time. I had fallen asleep in my clothes and I was quickly out the door trailing her. When I came out into the dimly lit heating pipes, it was much easier for me to see. I could make out a shadow moving through the pipes and decided to follow it. I was curious and wanted to ensure she wasn't trying to run away. She was a criminal, after all. No matter how nice she was to offer a blanket, she should face justice. After I caught up with her, I hung back far enough so she wouldn't notice me. She was heading to the storerooms. She stopped and put some things into a backpack. The next place on her list was the washroom, one level up. She emerged with a full pail of water and made her way back down using the emergency stairs. I didn't see anyone else around. The pirates were probably restricting people's movement on the ship. Even if they weren't, I didn't know what the regular traffic was down at this level. When I was confident she was heading back, I used the bathroom myself before returning. I was careful to call out before I entered the room. I didn't want her hitting me again. I reached a hand up and touched the huge bump on the head she'd given me. It still felt tender. I hoped she hadn't done any permanent harm. I hadn't noticed any behavior indicating brain damage, aside from my illogical attraction to her. I crawled through the door. Where were you, Alex? The girl was sitting on the futon with a package of dried food and a bottle of water next to her. I went out to stretch my legs. I didn't want to admit I had been following her. Well, 
I hope you feel better. These are for you. She handed over some food and water to me, which she had prepared for me in addition to hers. She had surprised me again. Thank you. I took her offering and sat on my makeshift bed. We ate in silence. Occasionally, I would catch her looking at me and remembered something. Somehow, you know who I am, but I don't even know your name. I remember from the testing center. The blonde woman called you Alex. I nodded. Was she avoiding telling me her name? I lifted my eyebrows when she looked at me again. It's Priya. She sounded reluctant to say it. I nodded. Priya. It suits you. It was her turn to look surprised. Was she your girlfriend? The question made me look up. I was trying to dig the last piece of dried fruit out of the packaging. She wanted to make it sound casual, but I could tell she was interested. It took me a minute to realize who she meant. You must be talking about Jane. I blanched at the thought of her being my girlfriend. Not quite. She's my brother's wife and mother of his twins. He'd murder me if we were fooling around. She's your sister-in-law, then. Priya was carefully cleaning up the remains of the meager meal and wouldn't look at me. Why did she care if Jane was my girlfriend or not? I wondered for a second if she was interested in me. I shouldn't care if this human was attracted to me or not. In fact, I didn't want her to be interested in me. She was all kinds of trouble. Today, she was wearing some standard-issue clothing she must have scavenged. Black cargo pants and a t-shirt stretched tightly over her generous chest, as if it was one size too small. I tore my eyes away from her breasts before she noticed me staring. I thought I would try to see some of these pirates and learn something about them. If I'm lucky, I might learn something that can help us get rid of them. Why would you do that? And why weren't you captured with the rest of the men? It looked like the idea had just occurred to her. Her question was a strange one. Because I have to. Priya had been reluctant to tell me her name as if I would somehow use it against her. Likewise, I didn't want to tell her about the secret passageway. It was our only advantage and I couldn't risk the information leaking. I thought quickly. I was in a remote area of the ship. When I heard the pirates had boarded us, I rushed down here and hid once it was safe. Sounds to me like you tried to save your ass. Why do you feel like you have to take down these pirates by yourself? Wait until someone else gets rid of them. Like the police? I shook my head. There isn't much local law enforcement in this sector. I had heard the speech from Anders plenty of times. It was the primary justification for buying the new fighters. But they're brand new and we weren't ready to use them. We're on our own. How do you know all this? She stared at me suspiciously. I had probably said too much. Let's just say I have a lot of sources on this ship and leave it at that. If she thought I was a jerk already, what would she think if she knew I was a prince? Why would you have special knowledge? Are you an official or something? No, I'm not. I tried to make it sound final. She looked taken aback. You don't want to tell me because you don't trust me. I don't have a problem with that. I don't trust you either. Her words bothered me more than I cared to admit. I'm not going to hurt you, Priya. I noticed her black eyes, the likes of which I had never seen before on Azim. I'm not afraid of you hurting me. She paused. Should I be? You don't want me to turn you in. Of course I don't. How would you feel if you were in my position? She had a point. Priya wanted to come with me, but I wouldn't let her. I told her the bloodthirsty pirates made it too dangerous, but that was only part of the reason. I didn't want her to know how I planned to use the secret tunnels to spy on the pirates. We had a long, tense discussion about the merits of her accompanying me before I abruptly ended it and told her she wasn't coming. She wasn't happy, but she didn't follow me. 
It was an exhausting and stressful day. I returned without any useful knowledge except a sense we were in trouble. When I returned, I announced myself and crawled through the maintenance door. Welcome back. Priya didn't greet me with a smile. What did you find out? I hadn't been gone long, but the room seemed smaller and more cramped than I remembered. I didn't like Priya living here. It was one thing to play in the place for a few hours as a child, but it was quite another to live alone in the tiny, dingy space as an adult. She looked surprisingly happy to see me, which caught me off guard, until I remembered I was the only person she had seen in a long time. If I had been alone for as long as she had, I would have been pleased with any company, too. I only bring bad news. She frowned. What do you mean? They separated the men and the women. The women are all in the first and second wings. The men are in the third and fourth wings. Pirates are roaming everywhere on the ship. How did you manage to figure this out without getting caught? I shrugged. I didn't think I should share everything with Priya. I ran into a pilot who was friends with one of my brothers. His name's Jason. Apparently there's a rumor that Anders left the ship. A fighter escaped right after the pirates took over, but no one knows for sure it was him. Do you think it was? It certainly sounds like something my brother might do. He's a bit of a wild card. But how could they have evaded the tractor beam? I thought everyone was stuck until the tractor beam is turned off. He's good with computers. He has talent, but all he's done before is hack into places and annoy our father. We're not alone out here. Maybe there's more hope than you think. Her black eyes flashed a challenge at me. We might be lucky. That wasn't the only thing Jason said to me. They already killed one of us. Are you joking? Nope. The pirates would rather shoot first and ask questions later. They don't need the men for anything. It doesn't matter if we can answer them or not. You shouldn't go out there again. It's not dangerous for me, Priya. The look on her face told me she didn't believe me. I had the irrational urge to tell her not to worry. I knew she hadn't been worried about me. We were strangers. I didn't know how to explain anything to her without telling her about the passageways, so I decided I shouldn't tell her anything. I hope it's not. You're in time for dinner. She gestured to a pile of dried food and water. It looks delicious. A five-star meal for people stuck in the basement of a starship. A grin spread across my face. I'm hungry, but I have something to show you first. You'll have to follow me. It's not here. Is it a present? I don't like surprises anymore. I wondered what she meant. Don't think of it as a surprise. It's something that will make your life better. Is it safe to leave with the pirates on board? I nodded. I promise nothing will happen to you. I knew she would have to trust me to leave the safe life she'd built for herself. She studied my face for a long time with a worried look in her eyes. She seemed to come to a decision and nodded. Okay, Alex. Lead on. Chapter 5 Priya I didn't know if it was the right decision to trust Alex and let him take me somewhere unknown. For all I knew, he was going to trade me to the pirates for credits. There might be a cop waiting for us so we could claim a reward. I suppose I was a sucker for an honest face. I didn't exactly trust Alex, but I didn't think he was a pathological liar either. When we went through the door and emerged in paradise, I knew my instincts were right. I gasped and put my hand over my mouth, looking around me in awe. Alex grinned at me. Do you like it? I can't believe this place has been here the entire time I've been eating dried food. I looked for the greenhouses, but couldn't find anything. Why do they hide this from people? He shrugged. I guess we're paranoid? Alex gestured with one hand. 
We have fields like this that go on for acres. There's enough fresh food here to feed the entire ship for a few weeks. It's just enough for us to make it to the next supply stop. It doesn't matter that I didn't know about it before. From now on, I'm not going to eat another piece of dried food until I get off the ship. The mention of me getting off the ship made us both silent. I looked away from Alex, taking in the beauty surrounding us. Pick anything you like, Priya. One person won't make us run out of food. I moved toward a patch of tomatoes. They were ripe and ready to eat. I pulled off my backpack, filling it with the most delicious dinner I could imagine since boarding the mothership. The ceiling was so far above us that it was difficult to see. Special lights mimicked the light of the sun. It felt like real sunlight, warm, yellow, and bright. Butterflies flitted here and there, and bees buzzed from flower to flower. A slight breeze from the air exchangers ruffled my hair. I raised my face to the warmth of the sun, keeping my eyes closed. I hadn't realized how much I had missed the light while hiding in the darkness. Priya, you've been in the dark too long. When I opened my eyes to look at him, he seemed concerned. You're probably deficient in vitamin D. You should come here every day to take care of yourself. What do you know about it? I'm a doctor. Of Azim medicine? Does your knowledge apply to humans? I hadn't expected him to be a physician. I hoped he was nothing like Jerry, my asshole ex-boyfriend. Was the hunky guy next to me really a doctor too? He had looks, kindness, and brains. People like him weren't supposed to exist. The tone of my thoughts must have come through in my words, and he frowned. What's that supposed to mean? We're physiologically very similar. I'm surprised. Aren't you a little young? You don't seem like the type. I felt my eyes bug out when I realized my thoughts had popped out of my mouth without my permission. What? He looked outraged and offended until he started to laugh. He couldn't stop laughing, and soon I was giggling with him. I couldn't help it. It was contagious. When we finally stopped, he spoke. I guess I should take it as a compliment, although it felt backhanded at best. I'm the youngest one in my family. The baby? I checked him out without letting him know I was checking him out. He certainly wasn't a baby anymore. Everyone told me I was too young to do almost everything. I sympathetically nodded as I pulled the warm, soft fruit off the plants, wandering up and down the rows with him following me. When you said I was too young to be a doctor, I had heard that many times before. It felt like an insult. I can see why. You must have quite a family. Are they pretty hard on you? Oh, no. He wasn't convincing at all. Do you want to tell me about them? I thought he would almost certainly clam up like he had earlier, but to my surprise, he answered my question. The lights were relaxing, and we seemed to be getting along. Arnan is the oldest. He doesn't laugh much. He helped raise all of us after my mom died. Avery is next, and he has never been serious at all. Anders is the pilot I mentioned. Avrin is a geneticist. I'm the youngest and the only doctor, I promise. I believe you. I was just kidding. I hope you weren't kidding about me being good-looking. He couldn't resist teasing me. I blushed. I liked his smile, but I was not interested in him at all. Alex Her eyes narrowed. No, that wasn't what I said. I was talking about you being too young to be a doctor. I'm often told I look too young for my age. It got annoying quickly because people wouldn't take me seriously. I stared at her. It's like you read my mind. I was surprised she understood what it was like to be me. Priya nodded. It's hard. It's not like you're a teenager. If you're healthy and look young, it shouldn't mean people treat you like a kid. The feeling of being understood felt foreign to me. I couldn't believe an annoying human was making me feel like she got me. I wandered over to where I remembered we grew lettuce. It was still in the same place. 
Do you want some fresh greens? I'll eat anything instead of rations. I bet. You want a shower too, right? Don't promise things you can't deliver, Alex. Priya gestured angrily at me with a head of lettuce. You're going to get my hopes up. It was probably a mistake to mention it, but she didn't seem like a criminal. I didn't think she was luring me so she could betray me later. Although I had no particular reason to trust her, I realized I did. There's a staff shower on this level. Let me check the schedule. You might be able to use it as soon as tomorrow. We can come back before the workers arrive. Priya stared off into space, dreaming about cleaning herself. I haven't had a shower for a long time. Sponge baths get old quickly. My mind helpfully supplied me with an image of Priya naked and washing herself. I started getting hard and quickly turned away from her, looking for something else to think about. An hour later, we sat in the orchard under an apple tree eating some fresh produce. Priya looked like she was in heaven. I almost couldn't stand the way she was enjoying her food. Her lush mouth and those red lips were simply too much. When she started working on an uncut cucumber, I had to put one of the handkerchiefs from her backpack on my lap to conceal my desire for her. How many brothers do you have again? She popped a cherry tomato into her mouth. Four. Arnon, Avery, Anders, and Avrin. Five brothers with names starting with the letter A. Are they all as handsome as you? I felt a surge of energy go through me. Priya was flirting with me. I guess so. We're all pretty good looking, I think. That's the understatement of the year, Priya muttered under her breath. She sat up straight as if she had just realized something. Wait a second. There's five of you? That's what I said. I've heard there are five princes in the Ozim royal family. She had figured it out. I had wondered if she knew enough about us from the news to read between the lines. They're supposed to be gorgeous, and all have names beginning with the same letter. They're just ordinary people, Priya. How do you know? I'm one of them. It doesn't have to change anything. I didn't like the look in her eyes. It changes everything, Alex. Maybe I should address you as your highness. I felt my eyes get big. No, you definitely should not. She wasn't eating anymore. She was staring at me. I'm the same guy who somehow became your roommate after a violent blow to the head. Just pretend this last minute of conversation never happened. But you're not the same. You're... I wondered how she was going to finish her sentence, but she never did. She started to pack up the uneaten food into her backpack. We should get back. Priya, please. I wasn't sure what I wanted from her. Alex, let's get out of here. It's dangerous to be out too long. She was used to hiding herself. It bothered me. In my head, I understood she was technically a criminal, but interacting with her made her real to me, instead of just another number on a piece of paper. I followed Priya as she made her way back to her home without any help from me. I was glad she had already memorized the path so she'd be able to find it when I wasn't with her. Was I going to turn her in when the pirates were gone? The more I thought about the idea, the more wrong it seemed. Maybe I could ask Anders to drop her off on a different planet. Once she was off the ship, she wouldn't be a stowaway and couldn't be charged with a crime. All I had to do was wait for the right time to suggest it to her. She didn't deserve a severe penalty, no matter what she had done. I didn't want to imagine her going to a planet where I would never see her again. I knew it wouldn't feel good. In fact, I was afraid it would make me miserable. I watched the swaying of her lovely hips and full ass as I followed her down into the darkness of level 10 and wished things were different. When we returned to her home, we both retreated to our respective beds. Priya started clearing out her backpack and arranging the food. 
Once she put away the vegetables, she began cleaning the room, even asking me to move so she could wash the floor. The whole place was spotless when she finished. Neither of us felt any better. Priya was upset I was a prince, and I had experienced that reaction so many times that I didn't expect her to talk to me much. She wasn't going to treat me like a peer now. I was sad, but I understood. It was easy for people to put royalty on a pedestal, but it was lonely up there. If I was honest with myself, I was experiencing something more powerful than sadness. I felt like I had lost a friend, but Priya and I weren't friends. I didn't know what we were. I had no reason to feel this way. Somehow, I had to use my head to think my way out of heartache, and I was starting to feel soreness in my wing pockets, which meant I needed to take them out tonight. I wouldn't be able to fly, but I could pull the wings out and flap them around. I was one of the few Aussie men who had survived infected wings. It happened when I was a teenager and my wings had recently emerged. Everyone warned me I needed to take them out every few days. I thought I knew better. They became infected, and I almost died. Whenever I took them out, the pain was far worse for me than for anyone else. I loved flying as much as any other person from Azim, but I recoiled at the thought of taking them out. I didn't want to go through the agony. But how could I do it without Priya seeing me? Our father, the king, had issued an edict saying all Ozzy men must keep the existence of our wings a secret from everyone, especially the humans. We were afraid that if they knew about the trauma that often befell our wings, they would never agree to have our babies. It had happened before. We had an agreement with a planet before Earth, but when they discovered the monumental struggles that come with our wings, they kicked us out the door. Priya could not find out about them. I would have to wait until after she fell asleep. As long as I moved far enough away, she wouldn't hear my cries of pain. I always cried out. I couldn't help it. Usually I had something to bite down on, which muffled the noise. I didn't think I could deploy my wings without making any sound. She would never know, and our wings would remain a secret. Chapter 6 Priya. The truth was out. Alex was one of the five Azim princes and one of the hottest bachelors in the galaxy. Three of his brothers were already married and off the market. He had shared a lot of information about his brothers while we were picking vegetables in the greenhouse. They seemed important to him. I had flirted with Alex without knowing who he was. I didn't want to remember where my dirty mind had gone while thinking about him. But I knew it involved him putting his hands all over my body. I shifted in the dark, lying on a futon and feeling hot at the thought of him touching me. I had to stop thinking about him like that. It hadn't seemed like a big deal before because he was just another guy to me. Now that I knew he was a prince, it felt a little inappropriate. He had been so kind while showing the greenhouse to me that it was changing how I thought about him. He seemed like less of an asshole now and more like a nice person. Unfortunately, it seemed more likely he would turn me in now because he was such a high-profile person. A person of importance had more credibility than a nobody like me. If he said he had found me as a stowaway, they were going to charge me. I was on a starship without a ticket. They didn't need much more evidence than that. I needed to stop thinking about Alex and get some sleep. I didn't know what would happen tomorrow. Alex was supposed to do some more recognizance, and perhaps, if I got lucky, he would let me come with him. I wanted to do something to help. I nodded off, imagining Alex snuggling with me and holding me tightly. Something woke me in the middle of the night, and I didn't know what it was. I listened to the evening sounds, wondering if a pirate had made their way into our quarters. I didn't hear anything more. I wrapped myself tightly in a blanket and noticed a peculiar silence. I could no longer hear the pirates, and there was no noise coming from anything but me. I couldn't even hear Alex breathing. 
I hadn't realized how comforting the sound was. It was a reminder I wasn't alone anymore. I must have awakened when I heard Alex leave. Where was he going? What was he doing? And why was it happening in the middle of the night? I felt betrayed. I had thought we made progress today in becoming friends. I crept out of the maintenance door into a brighter area near the pipes. Alex had only been gone for a minute. I should still be able to see him. A shadow moved far away in the space between the two largest pipes. If it was Alex, I would have to move quickly or I would risk losing him in the darkness. I felt a fleeting fear of getting lost. All the pipes looked about the same. But I needed to know what Alex was doing. Before long, I was so close that I didn't have to worry about losing him. My biggest concern was him hearing me. I slipped off my shoes, carried them in my hands, and stayed as far back as I dared as I walked softly on my bare feet. He stopped and paused, then moved off in a new direction. An enormous shaft appeared in front of me. It extended from the floor to the ceiling high above our heads. It looked like an old elevator shaft, but there was no elevator. I don't know what I thought Alex was doing. Perhaps he was having a meeting with police or pirates. I would never have imagined the truth. As I peeked into the empty shaft extending hundreds of feet above my head, I saw him bent over, every muscle taut, as if he was in terrible pain. His face cleared and he stood up, removing a stick from between his clenched teeth. The agony was completely erased from his features and I wondered if I had imagined it. I didn't have a chance to wonder much longer. Alex was standing in front of me, shirtless, and I couldn't help but notice his broad chest and well-defined six-pack. His arms were well-muscled, but what stood out to me most was a set of huge white wings that extended from above his head to below his knees. He gave them an experimental flutter, and a look of sheer joy came over his face. He jumped into the air, pumped his huge wings, and flew straight up into the empty shaft. Alex was an angel. I watched in awe as he flew for about 15 minutes. Each time he moved his beautiful wings, I imagined I could feel a breeze. In the small space, he was only flying up and down, but I could imagine him swooping and diving across a clear blue sky. I had never seen anything like it before. When he landed, his attitude completely changed. He pulled out the stick he had spit out earlier and put it back into his mouth. He bit down hard and a resolute expression appeared on his face. He flinched when his wings retracted. For Alex, everything changed. He groaned and bent over, holding himself as if he were trying to contain the pain. Tears came to his eyes, but he didn't let them fall. His turmoil seemed like it would never end. I wanted to go to his side, but I didn't want him to know I had followed him. After a few minutes, he stood up and discarded the piece of wood. There was no trace of the suffering which had been etched on his face only moments earlier. I wondered how he could be in such pain one moment and completely normal the next. He was leaving. I slipped away into the shadows, heading toward our sleeping area. I had to get back into bed before he returned and discovered I was missing. I moved quickly, but not quickly enough. Alex's legs were longer than mine, and he was catching up to me. I would have taken another route, but I was afraid of getting lost, and if I started to run, he would hear me. What could I do? I thought of a plan in a flash. I turned around and walked straight back at him. He was closer than I expected, and I ran right into him. Alex? I gasped when I felt his body. He grabbed me, and I wrapped my arms around his waist. He held me a moment before gently pushing me away. Priya? He peered at me in the dim light. What are you doing out here? I might ask the same of you. Are you running somewhere in the middle of the night? It's none of your business. The Alex who didn't like me had returned, and he was keeping his true nature a secret. If he couldn't tell me about his wings and was willing to lie to me about his true nature, why should I trust him? How could I believe a word he said? Turning away, I didn't bother replying to his rude statement. I was behaving like an idiot. Even though I was attracted to him, it didn't mean I should be with him. There were a lot of reasons why we shouldn't and couldn't be together. 
The biggest one was that he didn't want me, and the attraction between us was one-sided. A prince would have no interest in the stowaway, and lest I forget, he had even called me a criminal at one point. Wait, that didn't come out right. Priya. I heard him calling after me, but I didn't turn around. The worst thing we could do was be nice to each other. We needed to get through a few days together before going our separate ways. There was no way anything else could happen between us. Alex Priya had been spying on me. She was a criminal, so I didn't know what I had expected. I was dumb and naive. I couldn't trust her even when she was sleeping. What would have happened if she had seen my wings? I needed to stop grabbing her when she ran into me. I had done it out of necessity back at the testing center. If I hadn't caught her, she would have fallen, but she wasn't in danger this time. Was I already becoming attached to a thief? I knew I was lusting after her breasts and hips, but she was annoying, and she had treated me differently since learning I was a prince. On the other hand, she had given me one of her blankets on a cold night and shared her meager food supply. Her face, when she had felt the sunlights and eaten the fresh vegetables, had been absolutely gorgeous. I had to get her out of my head. We couldn't possibly be together. I was a prince, and she was a stowaway. We didn't have a chance. And she wasn't into me. I had no reason to think she was. I was fighting a battle in my head. I kept imagining her nude at inappropriate times. I was never going to be with her, so I needed to stop thinking about her. When I returned to the room, I crawled through the door. Priya was angrily cleaning again. I wondered if she tidied when she was upset. Priya, don't follow me anymore. I'm an adult. I can tell you, and I will if I think it's necessary. She turned and glared at me. We're on the same side, for now. You shouldn't go on a midnight excursion without me. Take me with you next time. I stared at her. She couldn't be serious, could she? Everyone was always telling me what to do. I was sick of it. I won't do it. I walked over to her and noticed her chest was rising and falling quickly in her anger. I towered over her and tried to use my height to intimidate her. Sneak off without me again and see what happens. She wasn't intimidated by me at all. People think I don't know how to make the right decisions, but I do. I won't have a thief like you giving me orders. You're a bastard. You know nothing about me. I know enough. Fuck you, Alex. She pushed my chest. Her cursing was what finally pushed me over the edge. I was wound up from flying and full of adrenaline from nearly being caught with my wings. I was angry at Priya. The energy between us was running high. She was too close to me. I pulled her into my arms and pressed my lips against hers. It was the craziest thing I had ever done, and she didn't pull away from me. She wrapped her arms around my neck and leaned against me, melting around my body. I kissed her like I hadn't kissed anyone before. Our lips merged, our tongues tangled, and our bodies touched along their entire length. I was so hard that I thought I would explode from her touch. Her soft body rubbed against me. It felt like we were meant to be together. Priya made a noise in her throat, and I groaned. I moved my hands from her hips, sliding them under her shirt. The touch of her soft skin made me want more. My hands moved higher. I was finally about to feel her breasts when we both heard voices. We froze, and I pulled my lips away from her. I squeezed her against me again before letting her go, making her gasp. Alex, what are we going to do? We have to get rid of them. They can't find out about this place. It was important for both of us to keep our location a secret. If the site became public knowledge, Priya would have to find another place to stay. I didn't want her to get caught, and I didn't know what I was doing. I only knew I wanted to kiss her again. And soon...
Chapter 7 Priya We had been fighting in the beginning. Alex loomed over me, trying to get me to back down, but I wouldn't, of course. Suddenly I was in his arms, and his lips were on mine. It was better than I had imagined. My body hummed, and my heart pounded. Where was my head? Pirates were coming our way, and I didn't have my trusted chunk of heavy pipe. Having Alex around was making me sloppy. He whispered into my ear as I held back a shiver. Let's go get your whacking stick. It worked once before. I nodded and led the way back to my secret quarters. The voices were nearby. I guessed they were only a few minutes away. What would they do with me if they caught me? I knew I wasn't beautiful like a runway model, but I was young and female. Alex's body had reminded me of that when I felt his hardness pressing against me. The pirates would certainly add me to their pool of sex slaves, and if they captured Alex, he would be the perfect hostage. They would have all the leverage they would ever need over the royal family. With Alex under their control, they could force his family to come out or fork over a ransom. I realized I could protect him. Even if the pirates learned someone was living down here, they wouldn't know there were two of us. If they were going to catch anyone, they might as well grab me. I could tell them I had been a stowaway and there was no one else down here. Alex could hide here indefinitely. It would be terrible if they had him as a bargaining chip. And what if they decided to carry out their threat to kill all the men? Even if I became a slave, at least I would still be alive. On the other hand, they might not be able to overpower us. It sounded like there were only two of them. If they found us, could we take out two pirates? I looked at myself with doubt. Even if we had surprise on our side and a hundred pipes, we weren't going to be able to beat anyone up. I grabbed the pipe as soon as we arrived at our quarters. I felt more confident wielding a weapon. Alex looked around for something he could use to fight, but all he found was a pail. If we take them out, the other pirates are going to know someone's down here when they don't return. I followed Alex out the door. What are we going to do? He stopped and looked back at me. When he spoke, his words came out in a whisper. You're right. He set down the pail. What do you think we should do? We can't let them find out anyone's living down here. If they find the room, someone is going to start looking for us. Come over here for a minute. Alex took my hand and pulled me back to the door. The darkness of the sleeping area enveloped us. We stood next to each other so we could talk quietly. I briefly wondered if there was another reason why we were so close. What might encourage them to avoid searching this area thoroughly, Priya? We need to make them want to leave voluntarily. Wasn't there a bunch of rotten fruit in the greenhouse? That's perfect. All we need to do is gather some of the worst-smelling food. We'll make this place stink to high heaven. They won't want to come down here, and we can clean it up after they leave. Brilliant idea. I was glad he couldn't see me blush in the dark. Are you sure the prince doesn't mind getting his hands dirty? The prince will do whatever it takes to stay alive. I wished I could see his face. I was sure his eyes were dancing. Okay, what should we do? I was gratified when he didn't tell me to stay and wait, but included me in his plans. I wasn't sure if it meant anything, but it made me happy. Alex It didn't take long to gather the ingredients and assemble the vile package. I took a small risk and concealed it in the search path of the pirates. Once I knew it was secure, I dashed over to where Priya was waiting took her hand, and led her back to our sleeping quarters. There was no reason for me to touch her again, but I liked it. She was becoming more important to me than I could have ever imagined a couple of days ago. I would need to sort out my feelings soon. Go inside, and I'll close the door behind us. She nodded, dropped to her knees, and crawled in. I followed after and started to seal the conduit door. Alex, what are you doing? I don't want to smell that stuff. By my estimates, we should have about eight hours of breathable air in here. If we can make the cracks light-proof, we can turn the lights on, too. I didn't know you could secure the door like that. 
I'm not just easy on the eyes. I'm smart, too. I tapped my temple. Aren't they going to wonder who left that pile of rotten fruit for them? I shook my head. If they bother reporting it and they investigate further, they're not going to find much. I tried to spread it around and make it look as natural as possible. In fact, they might think it shows the area has been vacant for so long that the food is spoiling. What do we do now? I thought of all the things I wanted to do to her. Some of what I was thinking must have shown on my face because she started to blush. We're stuck in here for the next few hours. I tried to avoid staring at her. Do you have any ideas? I wouldn't have thought it possible, but she seemed to get even redder. She dropped her eyes and avoided my stare. I wondered if her thoughts were anything like mine. If so, they likely involved putting our lips together and pressing our bodies against each other. We can start by getting to know each other a little better. I'm starting to wonder how a woman like you ended up being a stowaway. Something wasn't adding up. Priya wasn't a criminal. I could feel it in my soul. The more I got to know her, the less I believed she might be a thief. If she was, she must have a good reason, and I wanted to know it. To be honest, I'm starting to wonder why a prince would run to the basement of the ship. Where's the rest of your family? I felt my lips curve up into a smile. They're safe. I'm sure there's more to the story. Have a seat on my comfortable couch. She gestured to the futon next to her. It looked a lot more comfortable than my pile of blankets. I walked over and sat down, leaning back on the conduit wall. I got up the courage to pat the space beside me. Priya's lips twitched like she was trying not to smile. She accepted my invitation, but was careful to make sure we weren't touching each other. I took the lead. I have a question for you. I've been watching you, and something doesn't add up. Are you really a stowaway? She shook her head. No, I'm not. And it's your fault I ended up here in the first place. That's impossible. I was becoming more intrigued by her. Do you remember the day we ran into each other at the testing facility? I do. It would be hard to forget something like that. I was really upset when I left, and I wasn't paying attention to what was happening around me. It was dark, and some assholes jumped me. Did they hurt you? I was concerned, even though it was clearly behind her and I couldn't change the past. Don't worry. The worst thing that happened was losing a few credits. A passerby saw us and shouted at them, and when they were distracted, I ran and got out of there. I hid in the shuttle near the testing center. I turned my head to look at her. You were in the shuttle Anders and I flew to the ship? She nodded. I thought I could wait in the shuttle until it returned to Earth. Why didn't you say something? We could have brought you back to the planet immediately. I felt relieved she hadn't said anything. Otherwise, she wouldn't be sitting beside me. I reached out for her hand, wondering if she would let me hold it. A warm feeling spread through my body when she did. I didn't have the courage. All I knew about you was that you had been rude to me. If you were an irate shuttlecraft owner, you could have charged me with breaking and entering. It was better to stay out of sight. Our shuttle never returned to Earth. Why didn't you move to a ship that was making the return trip? I didn't know where to go, Alex. I had never been here before, and there wasn't a map printed on the wall. I found some food on the storage level. I looked around for somewhere to go, but before long, I felt the engines engage. Did you start to panic? I had researched starships in school. A transport's engines work hardest when they start moving to overcome rest inertia. You knew we were leaving, didn't you? She nodded while gazing at the opposite wall. As soon as those engines started, I knew I was in trouble, and the instant we started moving, I became a stowaway. I was never going back to Earth, and I would never see my family again. I would have lost my senses in your situation. I felt upset for her. I couldn't imagine being separated from my family again. 
Thinking about it made me sick to my stomach. I didn't have a lot of choices. I still don't. I could go to jail if I'm arrested. Maybe I'll get off easy with a fine, or maybe I don't have enough credits to pay for it, and I become an indentured servant for the rest of my life. Even if I get out of here, how am I going to get home? I can't afford a return ticket. I sat quietly, holding Priya's hand. I didn't want to leave her to any of those fates. There were a lot of ways I could help her. If we manage to get out of here, I'll do everything I can to protect you and send you home. Credits aren't a problem. They aren't? An amused look appeared on her face. Credits are a huge problem when you don't have any. My family's wealthy. I'll promise you something. If we can keep your existence a secret, I'll make sure you get a ticket back to Earth. That sounds great. She didn't look as happy as I expected. Thanks. Don't you want to go home? Of course I do. Priya flashed me a smile. There was something under the surface that seemed fake. Why are you looking at me like that? Do I have something in my teeth? I'm trying to figure out why you wouldn't want to go back home. The way she bit her lip and looked away from me made me wonder. Priya, you want to go home, don't you? Yes, I do. She pulled her hand away from me and stood up. I watched her start folding the messy blankets on her bed. She seemed upset. We just met each other. Priya couldn't have feelings for me already, and I couldn't have any for her. Was it even possible? If it was, it would be like something from a fairy tale. We were definitely not a perfect match for each other. I felt my cock twitch at the thought of us getting together. Did I imagine things? She couldn't have feelings for me, no matter how she had kissed me. I should focus on what I knew for sure. I had to kick the pirates off the ship and help Priya get back home. She said that was what she wanted. I tried not to dwell on how I would feel if she left. Chapter 8 Priya I was deluding myself. For a fleeting moment, I had almost believed Alex was interested in me. But the idea was ridiculous. He was an alien prince and wouldn't give a second thought to a woman from Earth. If he wanted anything from me, it was only a quick fuck. Was that possible for someone from Mazim? I hadn't read all the paperwork, but I remembered something about bonding for life. He certainly wasn't interested in me as a bride, and I wasn't interested in him as a husband. We barely knew each other. I needed to get my head on straight. He was doing a good thing by offering to get me off the ship and help me get home. The alien was doing the Earth Girl a favor. Why did I feel like I didn't want him to help me like this? I took a deep breath and examined my feelings as I searched the room for more clutter to tidy. I didn't want to go home because it would mean leaving him. It was a stupid idea. I couldn't care about him so much that I'd want to remain on the ship. I barely knew him. I wouldn't trade Earth and my family for Alex. Would I? A few hours later, Alex and I were sprawled out on our beds. I had drifted in and out of sleep, but it seemed as though Alex barely even rested. Every time I woke up, I saw him in the same spot, sitting up on his blankets. The last time I woke up, he was walking toward the door. Are you going to open it? The stench should be gone by now. Hopefully, the pirates left too. Nothing happened when he tried to open the door. It suck. He pulled it again, harder this time. The door didn't budge. He glanced at me for a second before licking his lips and bracing his feet against the wall. He tugged on the handle with all of his strength, putting his entire body weight into it. The door won't open. It's wedged in there pretty tightly. I stepped closer and examined the edge of the conduit. The seal has deteriorated. It's fused to the door frame. Alex looked at the seal, standing a little closer to me than necessary. You're right. I'll try to breathe half as often as I normally do. 
fear suddenly pulsed through my body. Don't do anything drastic yet, Priya. I'm sure we can open the door before we run out of air. Do we still have the pail we used to collect rotten fruit from the gardens? Yeah, we didn't want to leave it anywhere. It's over here in the corner. He walked to the corner, peeked into the bucket, and dumped it onto the floor to my dismay. Hey, what are you doing? You're making a total mess over there. Alex began separating the plants from the dirt. He stopped when he found a flower with a long stem and snapped the top off. A dark liquid began to ooze out of the stem. He jumped to his feet, carefully avoiding contact with the plant's secretion, and smeared the substance onto the parts of the door fused to the frame. I grimaced. That looks pretty gross. It's a pyrus plant. Not the most pleasant thing around, but the fluid in the stem is highly caustic and can dissolve a lot of material over time. As long as we have enough time. Alex turned his head to look at me. We don't have a lot of options at this point. It has to work. I nodded my head, hoping he was right. Alex had spent an hour walking around the room. How much air did you say we had in here? He looked at me quickly, eyes filled with guilt and fear. I'm not sure. I guessed eight hours altogether, but it depends on a lot of things. We have about an hour left, if that's what you're asking. An hour? I felt the fear I had been holding back start to rise to the surface. The Pyrus will do its work. Don't worry, Priya. Alex came over to me and held both my hands. Well, you look worried. Maybe it's okay to worry a little bit. Don't panic, then. I'm not panicking. I yanked my hands from him. I just didn't wake up this morning and think it was my last day alive. He checked the seal on the door again. Neither of us is going to die today, Priya. I glanced in his direction. Stop trying to comfort me by telling me lies. Are you always like this? It's the truth. You don't have to make me happy by telling me what I want to hear. I was getting angry. We don't know what's going to happen in the next hour. That's right. He didn't sound angry at all, but started pacing around the room again. I don't want to die either. If something happens to us, it's going to be my fault. I placed the rotten fruit. I trapped us in here. We could have done something different, like move to another level. I shook my head. You shouldn't take the blame for things out of your control. Alex turned his head away from me. I do that a lot. I've been trying to stop, but it's not easy. I walked back over to him and looked into his tired brown eyes. You're not responsible for everything. We both made decisions, and we have to live with them. Blaming yourself isn't going to help. Alex lifted his hand toward my face, but dropped it before he touched me. We should accept the fact that we may die in fifty... He glanced at the clock. Fifty-five minutes. Do you think we should go through the things on our bucket lists? I don't know. I guess not. But there's no point in holding anything back if we're going to die, is there? He gazed into my eyes. I felt the intense heat of his stare. What are you saying, Priya? I couldn't bring myself to say how much I wanted him. I decided to ask him something else, something that had been on my mind since the night I followed him. Why didn't you tell me about your wings? Alex I sighed, rubbing my temples. What else do you know? She took a deep breath which drew my attention to her breasts. It looks like they work. I saw you flying. I'm not an angel, Priya. I inched closer to her, edging into her personal space just enough to make her slightly uncomfortable. She gazed up at me with big eyes. What are you, then? I'm from Azim. We all have wings. She looked thoughtful. It seems like they would be more useful if they didn't hurt so much. I closed my eyes. Did you see me take them out? I got there right before you retracted them. Her eyes looked sad. Why were you in so much pain? I sighed and turned away from her, starting to pace again.
I felt trapped in our tiny space. It's always a struggle when we take them out or put them away. It hurts every time? She looked horrified. I thought you were going to pass out. If I did, it wouldn't be the first time. I shrugged. It's worse for me than the others. My wing pockets became infected when I was a teenager, and I've had complications ever since. She shook her head. I would have thought an advanced species like the Azim would have solved this problem by now. What do you mean? Why would you accept something like this? Can't you bioengineer your way out of this problem? I was flabbergasted by the thought. My brother is a geneticist. There you go. He probably wanted to fix you guys, just like the rest of your family intends to fix the problem with females. I bet that's the reason he became a geneticist in the first place. You're remarkably insightful for a person who hasn't met my family. How do you know these things? I wanted to touch her so badly, but I wasn't sure we were ready for where it would lead. Priya played with her hair and thought. I've always found people easy to read, I guess. That's a fantastic quality to have. I felt myself being drawn into her dark eyes, falling into them and never wanting to come out. I had a tight feeling in my chest, and I suddenly needed her. Alex? How long do we have left? I reached up and touched her face with the back of my hand. I don't care. She smiled and looked for herself. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Forty-five minutes. Do you really think we're going to die? If we are, it would be a shame if we didn't find out where this is going. Her voice became softer than before. We've been dancing around our attraction since we first met. My gaze moved down to her breasts and up to her face. Is it only an attraction? I moved closer and put my hands on her hips. It felt like they belonged there. Priya reached her arms up and wrapped them around my neck. She didn't answer my question, or she might have answered it with her eyes. Alex, just kiss me. I knew I was trying not to jump whenever someone told me to, but her command was something I wanted to obey. I bent down and gently touched my lips to hers. I loved how soft and plump they felt. She made a sound of need and opened her mouth. Our tongues twisted together, sending a shot of lust to my groin that made me hard almost instantly. Her sweet body was pressed up against mine, and I felt the desire spike inside me. From the way she responded to our kiss, I was almost sure she felt something too. Priya Alex's kiss was driving me wild. If he hadn't been from Azim, we would already be naked and writhing on the bed. The thought made my hips buck involuntarily. Our touch was already heating up to the level of a supernova. His hands moved from my hips to my waist and snuck under my shirt. He undid my bra and slipped his hand underneath it, palming my breast and sending a blast of desire through my body. I gasped, breaking the contact. Priya, you're beautiful. I'm just pretty. Don't sell yourself short. He moved to the other breast and tweaked my nipple, making me want to get closer to him. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever met. I was already panting, and he hadn't even touched my pussy yet. What you're saying can't be true. You're a prince. You must have seen hundreds of gorgeous women. Alex growled and walked me back toward my futon, pushing me down onto my back. He pulled up my shirt and exposed my bare breasts. My nipples were already as hard as pebbles. He appeared to be enjoying the sight. I've seen a lot of women. He bent down and kissed one of my stiff peaks, but none. He kissed the other one, and I pushed my chest up toward him. Were ever as beautiful. He planted a kiss between my breasts, brushing his rough cheeks on either side and making me shiver. And sexy. He gave me a glance, nearly setting me on fire. As you. 
He finally gave me what I wanted. His hot mouth closed over my nipple, and I let out a moan. After a few minutes, he slid a hand down into my pants and caressed my clit. I was so wound up already that it only took a few moments before my pussy began to pulse. My hips came up off the bed, and I came with the intensity of a thousand suns. Jesus, Alex. I opened my eyes. He had a satisfied grin on his face, and I smiled back, undoing his pants. What are you doing? His deep voice was starting to rasp. I didn't bother answering. I wrapped my hands around his hot, hard cock and started pumping as I gently circled the tip with my tongue. Priya. He said my name like a prayer. I loved the feel of him in my hand and mouth. He was rock hard and smooth, like a living fire. I could only imagine what it would be like to have him inside me. He began to thrust his hips, and I spat on his cock, firmly caressing it. When he came, his face was the sexiest thing I had ever seen. It was a shame we were about to die. Alex I was no angel, but I was in heaven. Seeing Priya come and having her hands on me was intense and passionate, everything I could have possibly imagined. I was grateful to have had such an amazing experience before I died. We cleaned ourselves up and tried the door again. It hadn't loosened at all. We attempted to open it together when Priya's hand slipped. She crashed into the wall where a screw protruded from the metal. She groaned when the sharp point tore into her skin. Oh, shit! She held her hand against her outer arm to stop the bleeding. My medical training took over automatically. I grabbed some cloth Pry had made from one of the blankets and pressed it onto her wound. It was worse than I had expected. The way she had fallen on the screw had deeply punctured her arm. I helped her to sit down on the futon and started to clean and bandage the injury. Thank you. Her eyes still had pain in them that I wished I could take away. As if by unspoken consent, we curled up together on her futon and spooned. I wrapped my arms around her and pulled her body close to me. That was really good. Not hurting myself. The other stuff. I liked it. Me too. When I murmured into her ear, she shivered, and I smiled. It's too bad we're going to die. We're all going to die eventually. Were you trying to say something else? What does it matter what you tell me now? She rolled to face me, those dark eyes looking straight into my soul. Okay. I was going to say it was too bad we couldn't keep kissing each other so we could see where it led. Azim can only safely mate with a woman they love and who loves them back. Sex without love can cause bond rejection syndrome, which is actually quite a bit worse than it sounds. Her eyes got wide. You're saying you couldn't fuck me? I knew she wasn't just asking about sex. I reached out and tucked a strand of black hair behind her ear. I spoke before I chickened out. I could fuck you. Electricity charged the space between us as she understood the full meaning of my words. Maybe I could fuck you first. We stared into each other's eyes without saying anything else. Priya lay her head on my arm. Alex, are you feeling sleepy? It's the first symptom of asphyxiation, I yawned. I guess it doesn't matter if I tell you I love you, as crazy as it may sound. She said it with her eyes closed, as if she were mentioning the weather. It must have been love at first sight. Well, no, I didn't like you at first, but I do now. I don't want to go home. I want to stay with you. And I want you to fuck me. I don't think you know what you're saying. I don't care if you don't feel the same way about me. I'm about to die, so what do I have to lose? I just wanted you to know. Maybe we can have sex in heaven. She yawned and snuggled into me. My pulse pounded in my veins. Priya, are you passing out? I think I am.
Well, before you do, I pressed a chaste kiss to her lips. I love you too. I want you to stay with me. And I want to fuck you so you can have my babies. Will they have wings? I smiled. Wings don't develop until the teenage years. She squeezed me tightly. I felt myself slipping into unconsciousness, and I knew I wouldn't wake up. Chapter 9 Priya A big, strong man who smelled like the forest on a sunny day held me close. I cuddled next to him, loving the feeling of being cherished and protected. Was I in heaven, being held by a sexy angel? I seemed to remember seeing an angel flying. The thought of snuggling up to him appeared to be an excellent idea. A familiar sensation pierced my thoughts. It was a pounding headache. Was there pain in heaven? If there was, I was immensely disappointed with the place already. A deep, gravelly voice spoke beside me. Everything hurts. The warm body rolled away from me, leaving me feeling bereft. My headache was getting worse and pushed all other thoughts from my mind. I sat up and tried to open my eyes. Piercing light struck my eyeballs, and I closed them tightly again. Priya? Are we dead, Alex? If we are, I'm very disappointed in the afterlife. His thoughts echoed mine. I laughed and immediately regretted it. Don't say anything funny. I held my head in an attempt to keep the sludge hammer from pounding right through my skull. I don't think we're dead, Priya. We're experiencing the effects of oxygen deprivation, headaches and nausea mostly. I pried open my eyes to see Alex gazing at me with unexpected amusement. He looked exhausted, and I probably didn't look much better. Why aren't we dead? Alex slowly stood and went over to the door. The pyrus juice worked. All we needed to do was wait a little longer. There was a hole in the door about a foot long and two inches wide, just big enough to let in some life-giving air after we had passed out. Memories came rushing into my mind. Had I really told Alex I loved him? I was terribly embarrassed. Alex had an uncomfortable look on his face when he looked at me. Do you remember anything about what we said before we passed out? His fingers tapped nervously on his leg. Apparently, I wasn't the only one who was starting to remember. Yes, a little bit. He looked like he wanted to say something, but abruptly changed the subject. Let's make sure we can open the door. We pushed on it together. After a few hard shoves, we managed to pry it open and step through the opening into the cold, fresh air. I took a deep breath. The air tasted better out here than inside. Without warning, my stomach began to rumble. I agree with your belly. Let's go to the greenhouse and get something to eat. He pointed toward the ceiling. Okay, I can't deny I'm incredibly hungry. We made our way to the greenhouse where I nibbled at my favorite earth vegetables and Alex picked food from the Azim sections. We ate together in uneasy silence, neither of us daring to start a conversation. Had I spoken the truth? I had never experienced a near-death situation before, but I couldn't imagine it making a person dishonest. I voiced what I had been feeling, but had been afraid to admit to myself. I snuck a glance at Alex and felt like I was going to float away. It was happiness. I wanted him like nobody's business. Was I in love with him? Maybe. After a less than auspicious beginning, it was now hard to imagine being without him. I didn't know where it had come from, and I didn't have any idea where we were going. But I loved Alex. There was no doubt in my heart. Alex I ate my vegetables out of habit, but my mind focused on the woman sitting next to me. I couldn't forget what we had said right before passing out. I couldn't imagine she had forgotten either. The shared memories left us in an awkward silence. Our confessions had spilled out because we thought we were about to die, but here we were, still alive. Now what?
My feelings for Priya had slowly intensified since I met her. It didn't surprise me that I had told Priya about my love. I had realized it in the morning, but I didn't know what to do about it, and a deathbed confession wasn't a promising basis for a relationship. She had said it first, which must count for something. I wanted to talk about it, but I worried that I would be starting something I might not be able to finish. It would be better to keep my mouth shut and see what happened. At some point, we also needed to find out what the pirates were doing. They had boarded our ship a while ago, but we didn't know if they had followed through on any of their threats. I had separated from my family to help people, not hide with my girlfriend. I still had hunger pangs. Do you want some dessert, Priya? We'll have to dig for it. She looked surprised but nodded. I showed her how to dig for the deliciously sweet, creamy roots which were a favorite on Azim, and we spent the next hour digging in the dirt and eating. That's enough! She put a hand on her flat stomach. I'm so full! We're all so filthy. I could see dirt on her hands and face, and I couldn't have looked much better. I dusted my hands off. Didn't I promise you a shower? Her eyes lit up. You did. Let's go clean up. Once we're civilized again, we're going to spy on some pirates. It wasn't a deep conversation, but it wasn't uncomfortable silence either. Priya I was so excited to have the chance to clean myself up that I couldn't keep from bouncing as I walked. Priya, we have to talk. Alex said my name in a way that made me know he wanted to have the talk. I had wanted to ignore it, but I knew we couldn't overlook what we had said, no matter how uncomfortable it made us. About what? Maybe playing dumb would work. He was walking beside me, but he stopped so he could give me a sidelong look. His incredible good looks took my breath away. I think you know the conversation we had about our feelings for each other. I'm not sure I'm ready to talk about it. The thought of confronting my feelings was frightening when I wasn't about to die. Everything seemed more complicated when you still had life left to live. Why not? It's awkward. I may have said some things prematurely. Why are you looking at me like that? You're acting like what we said and did was meaningless. I couldn't figure out his tone of voice, so I stopped. Alex appeared furious. Do you regret saying it? I don't regret anything. I started to grasp for a way to explain how I felt. But I wouldn't have said it if I had known we were going to survive. A black look passed over Alex's face. I'm sorry, Priya. I wouldn't have said those things either. But how could I be sure the pyrus juice would work? Did you make something up because you thought you were dying? My voice was becoming too loud. No, I didn't say that. He looked outraged I would suggest such a thing. Did you make anything up? I frowned at him. Of course not. He ran his hand through his hair and started walking again. Alex, what are we supposed to do now? I have no idea. We walked the long way to the shower in angry silence. How dare he question my honesty? How dare he make me fall in love with him and then leave me hanging? I didn't regret anything, and I wasn't a liar. What a bastard. We went into a small room holding a few lockers. A single shower stall sat in the corner. I forgot to bring anything so you could dry yourself. Alex silently searched the lockers and found a stack of towels, which he moved to the bench. I followed him to the shower. Without saying another word, he showed me how to start the water and left. I felt a sense of relief when he walked out of the room. I shed my clothes quickly and stepped under the stream of water. It had been so long since I cleaned myself under running water that I thought I was in paradise. I found soap and shampoo, using them to scrub myself all over and wash my hair three times. Once I was clean, it was time to relax. I stood and enjoyed the feeling of water running over me until I felt the air change. I caught my breath when a large, hot male body wedged behind me into the tiny shower stall. A naked body. 
What are you doing? I felt Alex's rigid cock pressing against me. I don't know. His voice sounded rough. I felt my nipples get hard, and I swallowed. Alex kissed the spot where my neck meets my shoulder, making me draw in a quick breath. Alex, what if I told you I wanted you to stop? I would do what you wanted. He kissed his way along and up my neck. Against my better judgment, I stretched my neck up, giving him complete access. What if I said I was angry with you and didn't want you touching me? I took a deep breath and tried to control my body's response to him. I would believe the first part completely, the second, not so much. His hands came around and cupped my breasts. They were a good handful, and a satisfied sound escaped his throat as he felt their weight in his palms. Alex squeezed and pinched my nipples. I felt myself getting wet and held back a moan. Do you want me to stop? His deep voice rumbled in my ear and made me shiver. I was afraid to say anything. My heart and body wanted something different than what my head wanted. I thought I was angry at him. Do you? Alex wasn't giving up. His hands stopped their ministrations but didn't leave my breasts. I bit my lip, still not saying anything. Alex took his hands away, stepped back, and left me feeling cold. He was really going to stop if I didn't answer him. I wasn't sure what I wanted, no matter how angry I had been with him. Wait. I turned and put my hands on his waist, pulling him toward me and bringing our bodies together again. I pressed my breasts against him. His handsome face looked conflicted. Alex, what are we going to do? This is crazy. You're right. It is. I don't know what we should do about it. We shouldn't waste this water. He made me feel wild. You better take me out of here and fuck me. His eyes got big. Wait a second. Do you love me? I needed to hear it again and know I hadn't imagined it. Did you mean what you said? He swallowed and blinked before nodding. I do love you. I don't know how it happened or why, but I love you like I've never loved anyone before. I had a lump in my throat, but I swallowed it so I could speak. I love you too, Alex. What's stopping us? We're not married. He looked uncomfortable. Does that break the bond? No. Marriage has nothing to do with bonding, but my father and brothers would be appalled if I bonded outside of wedlock. I glowered at him. We're standing naked in a shower together, and you're talking about your family? That's a good point. We should get out. That wasn't exactly what I had meant, but I stepped out of the water so he could rinse off. I left and dried myself off before sitting on the bench in my towel. I felt my heart begin to pound in my chest as he stepped out and I looked at his luscious body. How could a prince want me? I think there's supposed to be a manual or something. From what I've heard, I'm supposed to have my wings out the first time we mate. Whatever you say, alien guy. I shrugged. I didn't care about his weird rituals as long as he took care of the ache inside me. You don't understand, Priya. I'm bigger when my wings are out. All of me. I glanced down at him. Are you trying to tell me your cock is going to get larger? He nodded. I want you to know because my brothers warned us about it. Their wives were shocked the first time they mated. But they bonded, right? It's not going to kill me. Definitely not. Arnon says sometimes Jane specifically asks to fuck with his wings out. I felt my eyebrows rise. She likes it. Apparently. Don't tell anyone. Arnon shared with me in confidence. I shook my head. I don't intend to start a conversation about Ozine mating rituals anytime soon. Even if I wanted to, who am I going to tell? I looked around. Do you see me hanging out with anyone besides you? Alex came toward me and pulled me to my feet. The passion in his eyes was almost too much for me to bear. Priya, I don't want you to have to hide down here anymore. Well, I don't want to either. I'm tired of being alone. You don't have to be alone anymore. Take me to bed, Alex. I'll be yours.
I wanted him to possess me and own me. It works both ways. If you're mine, I'm yours, too. Are you sure that's what you want? I frowned. Of course. I love you, Alex. I want it all. He looked like he was about to lose control. Let's go home. The word home sounded special when he said it. It didn't matter in the least that the home he meant was an oversized unused heating conduit. Home, to me, would be anywhere Alex was. It sounded crazy, but it was true. We put on our clothes and I followed him back to our home, feeling excited and scared at the same time. I could hardly contain my desire. Chapter 10 Alex Home I couldn't remember the last time I used the word. I wasn't sure I knew what it meant. But the feeling I had right now, holding Priya's warm hand in mine, was the closest I had come in a very long time. It didn't matter whether we were going to a place in the depths of a transport ship or the most luxurious house on Azim. I felt something in my soul. From now on, my home would be wherever Priya was. I tried not to think about how strange it was to feel this way about someone so quickly. I tried not to think about my family and their disapproval. Instead, I focused on how right everything felt. Nothing else mattered. I wanted to be as close to her as I could, burying myself deep inside her and wrapping my wings around her. Priya loved me. The thought was intoxicating, and I tugged on her hand, drawing her close to me. Alex? She sounded surprised, but melted when I took her face between my hands and claimed her lips. You're mine, I whispered with my eyes closed. I'm yours. She was breathing hard. I was, too, after our kiss. We needed to get back, and we needed to get naked. She took my hand and started to run, pulling me behind her and laughing. I grinned as we tore through the empty hallways, feeling as free as I did when I was flying. I needed this woman. Priya ducked through the maintenance door, and I followed behind her. As soon as we stood up, we kissed again, our hands roaming everywhere. We clung together, trying to get closer and not succeeding to our mutual dissatisfaction. Priya expressed my feelings precisely. We're wearing too much clothing. I grabbed the hem of her shirt. She lifted her arms and I pulled it off. Priya tugged at my top and I raised my arm so she could remove it. She shook her head. How can a guy like you want me? She whispered, dropping her eyes. I'm a nobody. Priya. I lifted her chin and forced her to look at me. You're somebody to me. She shrugged one beautiful, smooth-skinned shoulder. I wanted to kiss it, but I knew I needed to reassure her. She went on. It's not just that you're a prince. Guys who look like you usually don't even know I exist. They're a bunch of idiots. We may be two fools together, but nothing has ever felt as right to me as we do. She nodded. I feel the same way. And stop talking nonsense. There's only one guy like me, and he loves you. I couldn't prevent myself from bending over to kiss her shoulder. I stared into her eyes again. She had her black eyes fixed on me, never wavering and drinking up every word I said. I want to fuck you so badly it hurts, Priya. Do it. I'm not stopping you. She reached behind her to unclasp her bra, and her breasts spilled out. I groaned, taking them into my hands. You're beautiful. I slowly unfastened her pants. They slipped off and dropped to the floor. I wanted to take a moment and look at her, but she was working at the fastener on my pants, which she couldn't seem to get undone. She made a frustrated sound, and I took over. Let me do it. We were both naked and kissing, our bodies tight together and our arms around each other. Priya's small hands roamed over the muscles of my back. 
I had never been harder or hungrier to fuck. I had never wanted another woman the way I wanted Priya. I reached down and cupped her full buttocks, squeezing and kneading before I broke our kiss. I love your ass. She stopped and looked me in the eye. That's hard to believe. She looked amused. Why wouldn't I? No reason. I'm glad it does something for you. She laughed as she pulled me in to kiss me again. Wait, I have to take out my wings. Don't do it. She had concern all over her face. I have to. We can't have sex whenever we want to. We have to do it correctly, or our bonding will be incomplete. I wish we could get married first, though. She lifted her eyebrows. We're not getting married down here, Alex. I sensed the desperate need in her voice. What if we said vows to each other? We don't need witnesses today. We can get married with all the ceremony you could ever want when it's possible. How does that sound? I gazed at her. She was perfect for me. I'll be back in a few minutes. Hold on, love. Are you sure you want to do this? She held me tightly to her. I don't want to. I have to. I pressed my forehead to hers. Let me go. I'll be back soon. She pursed her lips and stepped back. I pulled on my underwear again and passed through the door into the cold darkness. Deploying my wings seemed to be less painful than usual. Priya provided a welcome distraction. I flapped my wings once and thought about the sexy woman waiting for me inside. My erection returned as the pain receded. I tucked my wings tightly against my body as I crawled back into the hideout. I stood up, spread my wings again, and stretched my flying muscles. That looks amazing. Are you sure you're not an angel? Priya sat on the bed cross-legged with a blanket wrapped around her. I'm sure. Come here, Priya. You're kind of overwhelming, Alex. She didn't move. Her black eyes were big and round. In a bad way? I felt worried. Nope. In a fucking sexy way. Get over here. I growled, my voice filled with longing for her. She stood up and walked over to me. What you see is who I am. I stared into her eyes, begging her to accept me the way I was. I was tired of trying to be someone else so other people could be happy. When she whispered to me, it was like she could read my mind. You're perfect. You don't need to be anything but yourself for me, Alex. I kissed her forehead reverently, wishing I could tell her everything I felt. There was too much to explain. I needed to show her. Take these off. She tugged on my underwear until we were both naked again. I held both of her hands in mine. I know we haven't been together very long, but I feel as if I've known you forever. I don't know what I would do without you. I love you, and no matter what life throws at us, I promise to stand by your side. We may stumble and we may fall, but I promise we will work it out. Tears shone in her eyes as I went on. I won't let anything come between us. I promise to take care of you and our children. Will you take me as your husband? I will. Priya It wasn't an official wedding, but it seemed real enough. My legs began to shake as Alex said his vows to me. Alex, I've been alone for a long time. You seem like you're out of my league. He looked unhappy. Don't say things like that anymore, Priya. He captured my lips and kissed me senseless for a long time. I managed to say something when we came up for air. Well, it's true. I felt a little dazed, but I also see you. You do, straight into my soul. Behind the facade is the real you, someone who's more than a gorgeous guy and more than just a prince. I see Alex, someone who loves me. Yes, that's right. 
His eyes burned into me. I love you, Alex. I've never felt this way about anyone before, and I know I never will again. You're the only one for me. I promise to love you and respect you. I promise to have your babies. I felt a surge of desire race straight to my core at the thought of becoming pregnant. It might even happen tonight. I shivered. I'll always be here for you, and nothing will ever come between us. Will you take me as your wife? I will. A light shone from his eyes, making my pulse pound in my veins. You may kiss the bride. He looked confused. It's what we say on Earth. I'll take your word for it. Alex drew me into his arms and folded his wings around me, encircling me with his love and kissing me until I forgot everything except how much I needed him. I was so aroused that I didn't think I could wait any longer to fuck him. My legs were jelly. Alex grabbed a couple of blankets from the pile and led me to a metal duct I had used as my counter. He spread the blankets on the duct and lifted me, parting my legs and moving between them. I put my hands on his shoulders. Don't wait, Alex. I need you. I need you too, love. Are you sure you're ready? I took hold of him and guided him to my entrance. He was shaking as the tip went inside. Fuck. He was already stretching me. He pushed in an inch. I breathed deeply as he pressed in further. You're tight. He whispered. You're big. I shut my eyes tightly as I tried to handle the intensity. Open your eyes, Priya. I reluctantly gazed into his brown eyes. His wings surrounded us, and he was only about halfway inside me. Alex, I think it's too much. Do you want me to stop? No, I can handle it. Slowly, he continued to ease into me until he had buried himself completely inside. I can't breathe. I wrapped my arms around his neck and pushed my forehead against his. We paused, joined intimately together as my body accustomed itself to his impressive girth and length. Now, Alex, I felt myself relax before whimpering as he pulled out and thrust inside me again, stretching and filling me. Don't stop. It's so good. Too good, too much, too intense. Alex was inside my body and surrounding me with his wings. He was everywhere, and I couldn't get enough of him. He found a comfortable rhythm and pumped into me steadily, never breaking eye contact. I felt stripped bare, and it had nothing to do with being naked. He kissed me, and my heart swelled. I needed more. Faster. I whispered in Alex's ear. I arched my back as he hit the right spot, time and again, sending ripples of pleasure through me. He bent forward and took one of my nipples into his mouth, eliciting a moan. Don't be gentle. He put his hands on my ass and tilted my pelvis so he was even deeper than before, thrusting into me hard and fast. Yes! He pulled my other nipple into his mouth, sucking hard. I writhed and shook as he pounded into me. I felt my climax rising, higher and higher, until I cried out and lost all control. The longest, hottest, most intense orgasm of my life sent a shockwave through my entire being and rocked me to the core. Alex continued driving into me, pressing his hips against me and pinning me down as I writhed in gorgeous agony. Waves of overwhelming pleasure washed over me endlessly. As we came, I felt something else happening. An energy flooded me like I had never felt before. I clung to Alex, pulling his arms around me. The energy filled me. I imagined I could feel our hearts reach out and twist together. My mind lurched as the sensation overcame me. The feeling of being in love with Alex was replaced by something else, something stronger, deeper, and everlasting. It was like we had merged. I couldn't tell where his body and heart ended and mine began. Alex, I gasped. Priya. He kissed me, hard and hungry, passion overwhelming me. The kiss was intoxicating. I felt drunk on love and pleasure. He broke it quickly and held me so close that I could feel the beating of his heart. 
I don't know how long we stayed in that position. When Alex retreated from me, I made a sound of protest. He lifted me up as though I weighed nothing at all and put me on the bed before lying on his side, enfolding us in his snow-white wings. Exhausted from emotion and pleasure, we fell asleep in each other's arms. Chapter 11 Alex I woke and watched Priya sleeping. Her dark eyelashes lying against her cheeks were the most beautiful sight I had ever seen, as were her pert, perfect breasts. I felt myself getting hard again already. I wasn't sure I could ever get enough of her. The bonding had been an incredible experience. I felt closer to Priya than ever before. We were linked through our hearts and bodies alike. I hadn't imagined two people could have a relationship like this. I understood Arnon and Airy better now that I was bonded with Priya. Why they always wanted to spend so much time with their wives had never made much sense to me. They were sweet and lovely, but weren't there other things in life? I got it now. My wings fluttered, startling me. I had never slept without retracting my wings. I was required to have my wings out the second time we mated. I wondered if Priya might be ready to go again already. I shifted and began gently sucking one of her nipples. She took a deeper breath, which encouraged me. I moved to the other soft peak and helped it grow into a tight bud. Her hips twitched as I continued tasting the sweetness of her breasts. I slid my hand down between her legs. My finger parted her folds. She was so slippery and wet that I couldn't believe it. I rubbed softly and lightly on her clit the way I had already learned she liked it. Priya's breathing began to quicken. She twisted and wriggled under my touch. Alex? She still didn't seem fully awake. I moved on top of her and pressed my cock against her wet opening. When I slid inside, her eyes flew open and she gasped before spreading her legs as wide as she could. I gave a solid thrust, sheathing myself to the hilt. Just like that. Fuck me hard, Alex. Her commands were unexpected, but I wasn't going to complain. As I began to move inside her, she wrapped her legs around me and tilted her pelvis, taking me deeper into her heat. I thought I would lose my mind. I covered her body with mine and enjoyed her complete and total surrender. Do it faster, Alex. I'm close. I pounded into her as she whimpered and moaned, her fingers tangling in my hair as she clung to me. She lost control. Her body shuddered and clenched as she convulsed tightly around me. I pinned her down with my entire body, emptying myself deep inside her and filling her with my warm seed as an exuberant groan escaped my throat. The bliss was overwhelming. I thought I might pass out. She was still trembling beneath me with her climax, hips bucking and shaking with the power of ecstasy. When we both lay still, I took my weight on my forearms to look down without crushing her. I gazed at Priya, feeling all the strength of my love. I pressed sweet, soft kisses all over her face and she smiled lazily, keeping her eyes closed. I love you. I love you too, Alex. She brushed her hand along my wings as we fell back into a deep sleep. The hours passed in a haze of sensual pleasure. I don't remember how many times we fucked. We couldn't get enough of each other. Her hunger matched my own, and when we finally stopped, I had never felt better. We made a quick run to the shower to clean up after all the lovemaking. Predictably, it devolved into sex. We were insatiable. Hours later, unwilling to venture out to the greenhouse, we ate some of the dried food Priya had stored. So, we're bonded now? A light shone in Priya's black eyes. She leaned over and kissed me. I popped a bite of dried fruit into my mouth and gazed at her. When I finished chewing, I spoke. Do you have to ask? I knew she had felt the power of our mating. I certainly had. 
I wanted confirmation from someone with experience, I guess. Yes, we really did it. You're mine, and I'm yours. I put my finger under her chin. You shouldn't have to ask any questions. All mine. Priya picked up her cup and took a sip of water. Shh. She put her finger to her lips. I listened intently. Someone's out there. She stood up and grabbed her pipe, running to the door. Stay here, Alex. The prince can't get captured, but it doesn't matter if they catch me. Priya vanished. I heard the sounds of fighting as I scrambled and made it over to the door. I threw it open and rushed out, stopping in my tracks at what I saw in the corridor before me. A pirate lay motionless on the floor. Priya's arm looked injured. She had one hand over it and was moaning in pain. A fierce, red-haired woman wielded Priya's pipe and looked ready to fight. The woman's voice sounded like she was prepared to do anything. Stay back! Don't hit her again! I had to stop myself from running to check on Priya. She's hurt. Let me help her. Fine, but you have to help my friend. I nodded. I'll bring in Priya first, then come out for your friend. Okay, but I'm watching you. Her voice sounded threatening. I didn't care what she wanted as long as I could examine Priya. I helped my bondmate up and brought her inside. The pirate was a lot heavier than Priya but I managed to lift him under his arms and drag him through the doorway. When I saw the man's face, I nearly dropped him in shock before glaring at the red-haired woman. Who are you exactly? I set my brother Anders down as gently as I could. Why does it matter? I knew she was suspicious of me. I asked you a question. I lunged toward her and twisted the pipe out of her hands, preparing to swing it if I had to. She looked confused. I realized she didn't have a scar on her face. I feel like I've seen you before. You must be Alex. Anders and Gwen explained what they wanted us to do. Their plan sounded unorthodox, but I expected it when the two of them formed an idea together, and it was certainly better than doing nothing. Gwen and Priya would be separating from us and bringing all the women to the fifth wing. Anders and I would bring the men to a hidden section of the same wing, giving them a chance to fly. After everyone had assembled together, we would mass transport the pirates off our ship. Anders had a friend in charge of security in the sector and would provide a prison ship to accept all the pirates. It was a million to one chance, but it just might work. We had gathered the men and were already bringing them to safety. Anders beckoned to me in the dark passageway. We had spent a lot of time here as children. Alex, stay here and count everyone. Make sure all of them come through. I nodded, then realized he might not see the movement of my head. Okay. And make sure you're part of the first group. When was the last time you flew? I shrugged, feigning nonchalance. I don't know for sure. It had been twenty-seven hours. He saw through my deception immediately. Anders and I were close, and he knew me better than any of my brothers except for Avrin. You're going in there first. His tone of voice didn't allow for any argument, and I wasn't going to fight him. What little flying I had done in the elevator shaft hadn't been enough. I needed to get up there and stretch my wings, but I felt irritated. We had only been together for an hour, and he was already telling me what to do. I never wanted to go through an infection in my wing pockets again. I was meticulous about keeping track of my flights and making sure I flew on a regular basis. I didn't usually use my wings except for the scheduled flights to prevent infection. I suppose pain tempered my love of the air. I'm not going to argue with you. I held up my hands, palms out. You know I don't want to get an infection again. His gaze went dark. None of us do. We care about you. It's not a big deal. I'll take care of myself and I'll stay healthy. I wanted to make him feel better. I'm not a child anymore, Anders. I know, you're right. He clapped me on the shoulder. 
After we make sure these guys are safe, I'll check with the women. I nodded. All my brothers held themselves responsible for the infection because none of them had noticed I hadn't been flying. At the time, I didn't want to deal with the pain. I had let six days pass without flying, but there were so many of us that no one had noticed. When I started complaining, no one had believed me. By the time my family brought me before a healer, I was running a burning fever. I only survived thanks to the skill of the doctor. It had been motivation for my career. All four of my brothers felt guilty about the infection and its consequences for me. No matter how many times I forgave them, I always saw a shadow cross over their eyes whenever the topic of flying came up. I had never blamed them. It was my fault and my responsibility, not theirs. I had been reckless. I accepted it, and I still paid the price. Actions had consequences, and they could be permanent ones. I had learned the lesson at an early age, and it was why I was one of the youngest trained healers on Azim. In general, I always thought I made good choices, so having them boss me around all the time was a little annoying. Avery and Anders shouldn't tell me what to do just because they were a couple of years older than me. At times, it was downright maddening. The men caught up to us. I started counting as they passed into the flying chamber. As the last ones filed through, I approached Anders. Alex, my head still hurts. He unconsciously moved his hand to touch the injury. Priya either has quite an arm, or her pipe has mystical properties. Tell me about it. I rubbed my own bump. Did she hit you too? It was in self-defense. Everyone's here now except the one the pirates killed. I dropped my eyes, ashamed that we had lost even a single man. I'm going to check on the women now. Anders, you don't need to worry. Gwen and Priya can handle it. He frowned. Are you sure? Give them a chance. Fly for an hour before you start checking on them. They're more capable than you think. I'm not questioning their abilities. Anders's face looked grave. What if something happens to them? Come get me after my turn. If the girls aren't here already, we'll go check together. Anders glanced at me. Alex, make sure you get enough time and fly as long as you need to. I'm not going to have your wings on my conscience ever again. I sighed. I wish everyone would stop talking about it. We can't help it. He put an arm around me. You're our baby brother. If it had been one of us and you could have prevented it, you would feel the same way. I know, but you need to get past it. I don't hold it against you. Anders shrugged helplessly. I hugged him. Do you promise you'll wait before you run off to save the world? I promise. Have a safe flight, brother. It was a standard farewell on Azim even if neither party was about to fly. The phrase had always meant something more to our family. Whenever one of my brothers said it, I knew he was trying to tell me how much he loved me. I turned without another word and headed for the changing rooms. My heart was starting to ache. I was sorry my brothers still felt guilty about me, and I was already missing Priya like I'd lost an arm. Was this what it felt like to be apart from your bondmate? I could understand why my father was such an asshole if he felt like this all the time. I had never experienced sympathy for the king before. I had never liked him much, and I often wished he had been more of a father to me. Arnon had wound up filling that role in my life. If my father had done a better job, he would have made sure my wings didn't get infected. If I blamed anyone in my family for the incident, it was him. As a result, I had always tried to control myself and minimize interaction with him whenever possible. The older brothers talked to him often, working out policy and giving their opinions. Avron and I hardly knew him. I had a different perspective. I could see our family would have fallen apart without Arnon. As it was, I had practically grown up without a mother and father too. For most of my life, I remember wishing my father would love me and take care of me. Even noticing me would have been enough, but he never did, 
and I stopped expecting things from him that he couldn't provide. The anger never went away. I realized it was also my father's fault I couldn't openly be with my bondmate. I suppose I had issues. Even though my brothers wanted me to forgive him, it was never going to happen. I shut the door to the changing room and immediately pulled out my wings. I had learned that putting off the transformation didn't make it any easier. All it did was add a horrible anticipation to the agony. After the pain had faded, I made my way to the huge flying area and jumped. I pumped my wings hard and flew toward the high, distant ceiling. I smiled as I soared. When I flew, I forgot all my troubles and felt truly free. It was a shame the rest of my life couldn't be like flying. Chapter 12 Priya I was alone in the dark. Gwen and I had come to lead the rest of the women to safety. After a few terrifying hours of being held captive by pirates, we had managed to free ourselves and had almost made it to the correct area of the ship when Gwen had taken off into the outside corridor and disappeared. I didn't know where we were or which way we should go. I told everyone to sit down and wait. We were going to have to rely on someone to find us. I hoped Gwen had a good reason to abandon us. I had thought she was smart and responsible. I couldn't imagine she would risk all of our lives without cause. A familiar feeling came over me, and I looked around. Something reminded me of Alex. I could see a person moving toward me in the narrow passage. I stood up and prepared to fight. It might be Anders or Alex, but it could also be a pirate. I waited quietly, but I felt like I was going to throw up. I relaxed when a man came into my view. I could recognize Alex's form even from a distance. His walk seemed familiar too. I felt like I had sensed his presence and wondered if our bond had something to do with it. I moved toward him until we met. Tears fell from my eyes when Alex pulled me into his strong arms. We had only been apart a few hours, but we were acting like we'd been separated by interplanetary war. I felt as though I needed Alex the way I needed food and water. He was essential to my survival. Priya, I'm glad you're safe. I didn't say anything. I hugged Alex back and inhaled his familiar scent. What happened to you? Why are you stopped here? Anders came looking for you but never came back. The pirates managed to capture us, but they were dumb enough to put us in regular quarters. Alex interrupted me. The ones with secret passages? I bet you were out of there in minutes. I nodded. Hold on. They caught you? It's a long story, and I can fill you in later. We should leave. But why are you here? When Gwen left, I didn't know which way to go. I thought someone would be looking for us when we didn't arrive, so I decided to wait instead of wandering around the ship. I was saying too much. I wanted his approval. I didn't know what to do, Alex. I'm not a leader like Gwen. You did well. Alex lifted my chin, forcing me to look at him in the dim light. Waiting might have been the best thing you could have done. After we move the women to safety, we'll find out what happened to Anders and Gwen. It was Anders. I finally put two and two together. What about him? He's the only reason Gwen would leave the women. Something must have happened in the corridor. Alex nodded. Maybe. I hope they're okay. Me too. They're smart and can take care of themselves for a little while. Alex didn't seem convinced, but started moving resolutely in the direction he came from, towards safety. Alex and I stood in the secret passageways. I wondered if my eyes would ever get used to being in the light again after all the darkness. We had relocated everyone from the ship into the fifth wing. As soon as we located Anders and Gwen, we could beam everyone out of here. How can we find them? Can you use the ship's computer system? Technically, yes, but the pirates have control of it. They would receive an alert and know we're here. How about a manual search? Let's gather some of the men and look into all the possible hiding places. Alex shook his head. 
The ship is the size of a small city. It would take too long and put other lives in jeopardy. If we can't find them, we might have to do the mass transport without having a lock on them. I don't want to risk their lives. The technology behind mass transportation hadn't been perfected. Scientists had figured out how to teleport a single person, and these days it was considered as safe as flying or riding a bus. Moving two or more people at once was complicated. Sometimes the computer could only get a partial lock on people and left parts of their bodies behind. Alex, aren't you guys supposed to be royalty? Don't you have ways of finding each other? Alex's eyebrows drew together. We have trackers inserted under our skin, but we don't have access to the readers. Anders is better with computers than I am. On the other hand, there's an emergency computer system running on a separate network. It's designed to operate independently. I might be able to use it to find Anders. I clapped my hands. Perfect. We should hurry. It's going to be morning soon. When the pirates go to move the cargo and realize it's missing, it won't take them long to figure out what we did to them. Alex located Anders and Gwen within 30 minutes, but he had bad news. They were in one of the ship's prison cells. I felt like I was getting an accelerated course in Azim cursing. I put my hand on his arm. The Mark and ships will be here soon to support us. How can we get them out of there? That part's easy. I have the master codes to the cells. The patrols are the problem. He motioned to the screen in front of him. There are eight guards in the area. I think there's a way around any security, Alex. These guys are always thinking about sex. They were feeling us up as soon as they saw us. Alex's head appeared in front of my face with a black expression. What do you mean by that? I stepped back, surprised by his vehemence. I misspoke. They almost grabbed me, but I got lucky. One asshole had his hands on Gwen, but he ended up getting beaten. Gwen said she was okay. She's pretty tough. Alex started muttering in an alien tongue. My point is that these guys have a one-track mind. Alex stopped swearing and stepped toward me, pulling me tightly against him and kissing me. He cut off the rest of my words. When he pushed me away, I was panting. You're my mate, Priya. Mine. No one else can touch you. He looked like he might lose control at any moment. I had never seen him this way, and it was intimidating, to say the least. Okay, I didn't know it was like that. He narrowed his eyes at me before tilting his head. Do you think I'm overreacting? I shrugged nervously. Maybe? I'm not. He eyed me speculatively. What would you think if one of those sexy women wandering around in slave outfits grabbed me, kissed me, and put her hands down my pants? I'd kick her ass. I couldn't believe the intensity of my feelings. I became angry immediately. He smiled in satisfaction. Exactly. Having a bond mate isn't like any relationship you've ever had before, human. Everything is different now. I guess it is. I shook my head. What was your idea anyway? All we have to do is get some of the women half naked. Once those guys start leering at them, I think they'll leave their posts. I bet they'll do anything for a fuck as long as they believe they won't get caught. It was surprisingly easy to break Gwen and Anders out of jail. My biggest problem had been waking up Anders. I kept my voice quiet as we entered the secret passages. It would be terrible if the pirates grabbed one of the princes. I stepped into the darkness and looked around for Alex. I'm just a stowaway. It won't matter if they catch a nobody. It will matter to me. Alex spoke from the shadows and I felt my heart begin to pound. He took me in his arms and kissed me so intensely that when he stopped, I could hardly remember where I was. It has already begun. Alex looked to Anders and Gwen. The Marcans have already engaged the pirates. Aren't you guys supposed to be hacking the tracker beam? Anders shook his head. We can't do it from here. They've increased their security since I poked around in there. I won't be able to break through in time. Well, if we can't hack into their tractor beam from here, I guess we'll have to blow something up. 
Anders and Gwen exchanged a smile of pure mischief, but Anders was the one who spoke. I suppose we can launch a missile at the generator. Good. The Marcans can only keep them busy for so long. Anders and Gwen nearly crashed their ship trying to destroy the tractor beam, but once they did their job, everything else was easy. Alex and I used weapons from the armory to overpower the pirates in the control room. As soon as the tractor beam was down, we started a mass transport for each wing of the ship and beamed the pirates directly to a prison ship. And just like that, our pirate problem was solved. As soon as the chaos began to die down, Alex took me back downstairs to our quarters. I had to sit on the pallet by myself while he went back to his family. He said everyone needed to apologize to Anders. The pirate threat had disappeared, but my problems remained. I wondered how much longer I could play this game. A little while ago, I hadn't known what to do, and I had no good reason to get off the ship. But now, Alex was part of my life. I wanted to be with him, but there were many problems between us. I was a criminal and tested positive for H4T7. He hadn't said much about his father, but I had the feeling the king wasn't going to welcome me with open arms. I thought about my options. I loved Alex and wanted to be with him, but realistically, how could we be together? We would have to leave the ship eventually. I hadn't known him very long, but it seemed that he was close to his brothers. I'm not sure he would leave them for someone he just met, regardless of our bond. How would we get off the ship? The idea of a stowaway and a prince remaining together in the long term was as ridiculous now as it ever was. I didn't want to take him away from his family, but I didn't see a way for us to be together here. If I stayed, someone would find out I didn't belong. I wasn't only worried about myself anymore. I didn't want to bring shame to Alex or his family. I couldn't stay, but I didn't want to leave. My eyes were starting to feel heavy. I was exhausted. Alex and I hadn't spent a lot of time sleeping lately. My plans would have to wait until tomorrow. I dozed off in an instant. Chapter 13 Alex I made my way through the ship silently, but my body was alight with anticipation. I hadn't seen Priya for two weeks. It felt it had been two months. We couldn't keep living like this. We both knew Priya needed to get off the ship, but neither of us knew what to do from there. I wasn't sure how to leave. I intended to talk to Priya about it right after I fucked her brains out. I was already getting hard thinking about my beautiful mate. There was also the issue of marriage. I wanted to marry Priya officially but I didn't know if we would have the chance to have a proper ceremony. We would probably have to get married after we left the ship. I planned to be with Priya for the rest of my life, and all I had to do was make everything official and legal. It was a shame that we couldn't have a proper Azim wedding. My memories of our homeworld were hazy at best. I had spent most of my life on the ship, and I didn't want to leave my family, but I knew I would have to. There wasn't any other way for Priya and me to be together. I didn't know what would happen if I didn't have big brothers ordering me around. I would have to work up the courage to tell them and make a plan to leave. But I wasn't in a hurry yet. The danger to Priya was real, but none of this felt urgent. If I didn't make waves, I could have the best of both worlds and have time with both Priya and my family. Things never worked out when I procrastinated. I thought I knew the man who was making his way toward Priya. I couldn't see his face in the dim light, but I thought he was a scientist. He seemed to be testing the air quality. He stopped and took an instrument out of his kit, slowly waving it around until it beeped and flashed green. He made a note on his computer and kept walking. He was probably just doing a routine inspection, but if he kept going, he was going to run into Priya. I couldn't let him find her but I didn't have an excuse for being here myself. I decided to silently follow him while trying to figure out a plan that wouldn't ruin everything. When he stopped to run another test, I stopped too. 
When he moved, I darted after him like a shadow. I hoped Priya had heard him and wouldn't reveal herself unexpectedly. As long as he completed his tests, he would leave on his own and not come back. It would be ideal if he came as close to Priya's hideout as possible. Once he had finished scanning the area, I could distract him to keep Priya's secret without alerting him to my presence. I needed him to be called away at exactly the right time. Avrin worked as a geneticist and also supervised all the scientists on the ship. He had an assistant to organize everyone's schedules, but he could tell them what to do. If Avrin called the guy back, he might wonder why, but he would leave. He was rapidly approaching Priya's location. I started to sweat. If he found her, they would put Priya in jail, and I wouldn't get the chance to see her again. I couldn't wait another second. I needed Avrin's help. He would have uncomfortable questions for me, but I had to protect her. It only took me a moment to send Avrin the request. On the computer screen, his only reply was a bunch of question marks. I watched the scientist step into the open area next to Priya's quarters right before his communicator chimed. Hello? Yes, sir. It's going well. I'm almost finished here. He fell silent, listening for a moment. All of the tests are negative. Do you want me to come back to the lab? He broke the connection and stared at his computer before glancing at the unused ventilation shaft. He stepped toward the maintenance door. Was I going to have to knock him out after all? I didn't want to have to explain assaulting a fellow crew member, and it would draw unwanted attention. He reached out and put his hand on the doorknob. I moved quietly toward him, ready to strike. His communicator chimed again, and he glanced down at it. I had asked Avrin to make sure his man complied. The scientist sighed and shook his head, but turned and walked away. In a few minutes, he had disappeared. I felt my shoulders drop as I relaxed. Priya As soon as Alex stood up after crawling through the maintenance door, I threw myself at him. He clutched me without saying anything. They almost found me, I whispered. We made our way to the bed and sat next to each other. Sometimes we used the bed for other things. I tried to forget the image of the last time he had visited me. Alex had been sitting in the same spot, but I had been on his lap, riding him. It was hard to stop thinking about when Alex was around. I didn't know if the bond made me hornier than usual. I just knew I wanted him all the time. I tried to pay attention to what he was saying. It was just one person. I think he was testing the air quality. I nodded. I had been about to go into the greenhouse when I had spotted the head approaching me above the pipes. The light from his computer drew my attention. I didn't have time to run away before he saw me, so I hid instead. I had been terrified. My bizarre life had suddenly come into sharp focus, and I realized I was living on the edge of doom. I resolved to get out of here immediately. It's time for me to go home, Alex. You can help me, right? I took his hand and looked into his eyes. I know. I can do it as long as we make a plan. It's harder now that I've met you. Before, it didn't matter if I left or stayed. He searched my eyes, and I saw fear in his expression. Everything's going to work out. Could Anders sneak me onto his ship when he's going on a flight? Alex nodded. That's certainly a possibility. I'll talk to him about it when I go back. Okay, but where will I go? You're not leaving without me. I looked away from him. Of course, it just slipped out of my mouth. Priya? He turned my head and forced me to look at him. We're going to stick together. Of course we are. His words were only slightly reassuring. We lived separately now, and we didn't know what was going to happen. I thought Susan was a possibility. I know the king, and we could fly under the radar without attracting any attention. If we have a planet in mind, if we find a place to lie low for a while, we can start building a new life. I've already moved a big chunk of credits to a joint account. He looked down at his computer and issued a few commands. You have access now. Go ahead and check. 
We won't have to worry about money. What do you think? How long is it going to take? When will our flight path take us by Susan? The mothership is still more than a week away. On the other hand, one of the smaller, faster ships can be there in a day. As soon as you leave the mothership, you are technically not a stowaway. I'll try to talk to Anders today. I sensed Alex's mind had moved elsewhere. His hand slid up my thigh, and he started to kiss my neck. Thank you. I lost myself in his body. Alex. I wondered when you were going to make up your mind. Anders shook his head as we sat down in his living room. You took quite a risk when you let her stay on the ship for so long. He was right, but he was bossing me around again and making me feel like a child. I wasn't a baby anymore. Anders, it wasn't the right time for us. He looked at me skeptically. He didn't believe what I was saying any more than I did. I slammed a fist into my hand. What happened in the past doesn't matter as long as we're doing something about it now. Have you got an assignment coming up? Like running a shuttlecraft to pick up supplies at the next planet? Anders checked his schedule while I rose from the couch and started pacing around the room. It looks like Gwen and I have scouting duty in three days. Nothing sooner than that? He shook his head. No. Sorry, Alex. You should have asked me earlier. I was hoping we could get her out of here today. The door of their apartment opened abruptly. Gwen walked in, looking stunning in her navy flight suit. She pulled out her ponytail, her copper hair falling around her shoulders in a blaze of glory. Anders's face lit up immediately. Hi, babe. She gave him a kiss on the lips. Good morning, Alex. I nodded, trying to avoid feeling like a third wheel while I racked my brain for another solution. Gwen took a step back. What are you guys talking about in here without me? I feel like I walked into a secret boys club meeting. She took off her flight jacket and boots. I hate flying those shuttles without you, Anders. I don't like flying alone either. He shook his head. Are you going to explain the weird atmosphere? Gwen lifted her eyebrows and gestured at us. Alex is finally ready for me to help him move Pry off the mothership. Thank goodness. Gwen flopped onto the couch next to Anders. I was wondering how long you two are going to wait. Anders says you don't have another flight for three days. We don't want to steal a ship, do we? I hesitated to suggest it. Anders had already gotten into a lot of trouble with the new fighters, but I was running out of ideas. I felt like we needed to get Priya off the ship tonight. Gwen shook her head. What are you talking about? Anders, you're an idiot. She slapped him lightly on the cheek. You're thinking like a pilot. Try thinking like a prince. You don't want to take one of those crappy shuttles on a long flight, do you? My eyes lit up. Gwen was giving me hope. I'm working a split shift today. Her tone was matter of fact. I can take Priya with me. There's a space station about an hour from here. I can drop her off for a few days. I'll come back and we'll retrieve her as part of our regular schedule. The problem is we're only making a short-range trip. We really need to be in one of the long-range scouts. Do you know anyone who could change our assignment? She faked a frown of confusion. Someone like a prince, perhaps? Okay, okay. Anders shook his head. Gwen, you're a genius. I gave her a big kiss on the cheek, making her blush, and Anders frown at me. I wouldn't call myself a genius for having to go to work. Let's look at the schedule. Gwen ran her finger down the list. Here we go. Switch us with Jason and Bailey. They won't mind, and they owe us a favor. Really? I don't remember anything like that. Anders turned and looked at Gwen. What did we do for them? Doesn't everyone on the ship owe us for saving their asses? I guess so. He pulled up the schedule on his computer and rescheduled some shifts before looking up at me. We're all finished here. Thank you so much. 
The sense of relief made me feel giddy. Make sure she gets on the ship before nine, Gwen added. Either both of us are going, or neither of us is going. We're leaving together. Of course. That's what I meant. Gwen looked embarrassed. We'll miss you, Alex. Anders nodded. But we know you have to go. We'll try and think of a way to return. I hated telling a lie. I knew it was impossible for me to come back without forgiving my father and asking his permission to marry Priya. It was bad enough that Arnon had married a woman who carried the gene, but he was the crown prince, and my father needed him. I was never likely to see the throne, and therefore insignificant. He wouldn't allow me to marry Priya, or, if he did, I would be cut off from the family. My father was a harsh person. Jane had redeemed herself in his eyes by having a girl as part of a set of twins. The chances of Priya having twins were minuscule. If you stay out of sight for a while, it won't matter as much. Anders looked hopeful. Once the Earth women start arriving and having babies, a single couple won't be crucial to our survival. Maybe he was right. For the first time since I had met Priya, I saw a light at the end of the tunnel. Perhaps there was the possibility of acceptance. We could act like everyone else and not have to live in the shadows. All we had to do was move her. As soon as we finished hashing out the details, I went back to my quarters and filled a backpack with essentials before heading downstairs to retrieve Priya and bring her to Gwen's ship. I was worried but excited at the same time. As soon as Priya's feet stepped off the deck, I knew I could relax. I opened the door to her quarters and was surprised to see light shining directly at me. I closed it immediately, leaving a slight opening for me to look through. My pulse started racing. There was never any light down here. I looked through the crack and saw men and women wearing red security uniforms searching the area. I had waited too long. Father had threatened to do a comprehensive search of the ship, but hadn't found the time to organize it. Apparently, he had made room in his schedule. I shut the door completely. If I went out there, I would be implicated and arrested too. I wouldn't be able to help Priya, and I would never see her again. I supposed it was possible they might overlook her, but our people were thorough. They were going to look beneath every pipe until they found her. I trudged up the stairs until I reached the level of my living quarters and put away my backpack. With a heavy heart, I went to find out where security was keeping my mate. Chapter 14 Priya My life was over. The man staring at me with cold eyes could have been my father-in-law in another life. I tried not to flinch. I didn't want to show him how scared I was. I warranted the attention of His Majesty, the King. When they found me, they thought I was a pirate until they got a good look at me. Your claim is that you're here by accident? The King's voice and face conveyed how incredulous he was of my explanation. There's no way you have survived on your own all this time. Who's been helping you? I found a storeroom and I've been subsisting these months on dried rations. It was technically correct. I was intentionally leaving Alex out of my past. I wasn't going to feed him to the wolves. I went exploring and found the greenhouse, so I helped myself to some vegetables out of necessity. You're not a pirate. You don't have any scars on your face. No, I'm not. I'm just a human from Earth who got into a little trouble. I never meant to be here. I looked steadily into his eyes. I was going to leave as soon as I could. I wondered if he would believe me. Alex was supposed to be setting up something with Anders, but they were going to be too late. Maybe telling him about Alex would have changed things, but it was bad enough we were going to be separated. He didn't need to have the pain of my betrayal as well. I understand, but I'm afraid I cannot be lenient and encourage these things. I had just finished telling him I made a mistake. No wonder Alex didn't want to tell his father about us. He was an asshole. Still, I couldn't blame him. 
all I had was my word. Our society depends on using large spacecraft to transport our population. We cannot have extra weight on the ship. He paused. Since you are not a pirate, you will only be charged with stowing away on a starship. Oh, that's all, huh? I couldn't hold back my anger, which came in the form of biting sarcasm. He might as well have said he was going to execute me. He certainly had other choices. He could have been lenient and dumped me off on the next planet or space station, but he wasn't going to be. Rage and intense frustration filled me. I wanted to cry, but I held it inside. I wasn't going to give this jerk the satisfaction of seeing he had upset me. He gave me one last look before leaving. It reminded me of a person staring at a piece of garbage stuck to their shoe. I was left alone to consider my mistakes. All I could think about was how much I missed Alex already. The prison guards were the first thing I saw in the morning. They forced me into a bright yellow jumpsuit, indicating I was an inmate. The cheerfulness of the clothing color didn't match my mood, nor did the handcuffs. They didn't even let me walk around without an escort. When I had to walk down a long corridor, there was a guard on either side of me. I didn't know I was such a dangerous person. At the end of the hall, a prison ship had docked directly with the security wing of the mothership. I looked around the ship that had inadvertently become my home one last time before I stepped through the airlock. Two men appeared at the end of the hall. One was the king, and the other looked so much like the king, he must have been one of Alex's brothers. Alex came running behind them and stopped dead when he saw me in the distance. I stopped walking, wondering if something was going to happen. The prison guard prodded me, and I started moving again, afraid of his stun gun. Alex was out of sight in a few seconds. I held my breath. Would he convince his father to free me? Would Alex charge in and rescue me? When the cell door hissed closed and a klaxon sounded to indicate it was locked, I plopped down on the hard metal bench and put my head in my hands. There wasn't going to be a last-minute rescue. I wished I hadn't seen Alex at all. It made me feel worse than before. I had already felt his rejection, but now the muscles in my abdomen were clenched so tightly that I thought I might throw up. How could he have let this happen? He didn't want me. He had lied before when he said he loved me. I wasn't good enough for him, just like I hadn't been good enough for Jerry. Who was I kidding anyway? Someone like him couldn't love me. He was a hot guy, a doctor, and a prince for fuck's sake. I knew there were some legal formalities in my future, but I wasn't stupid enough to think they would acquit me. I would rot in jail without any money to pay my fines. It was all my fault. I should have left as soon as I could, but not only had I been too afraid, I had accidentally fallen in love. At some point, I had decided to stay in the bowels of the ship, thinking I would be safe forever. I shook my head. If I had left, I might still be with Alex. I started to cry, thinking about all the years ahead of me without Alex. I would miss his sexy body and the way he looked at me. I would miss everything. How had I come to love him like this so quickly? When my tears ran out, the anger came back. Alex could have done something to stop them from taking me away, but all he did was watch. He had promised he wouldn't let anything come between us. But when the time came for him to honor his words, he hadn't lifted a finger to help me. I would have to make a life for myself in jail, but for the moment, I needed to wallow in misery. I sat and stared at the wall and felt my heart gradually turn into a hard chunk of ice. Alex. I banged on Anders' door. I didn't stop when he didn't answer immediately. He was going to open the door. Maybe he couldn't hear me. Anders! The door opened a second later, revealing my brother's shocked face. What the hell, Alex? I pushed past him. Avern and Gwen were in the living area with drinks in their hands. They found Priya! He shut the door and came and joined the three of us, dropping to the couch beside Gwen. I started pacing around the room. This is bad. 
He leaned forward, putting his elbows on his knees. Alex, what are you going to do? Gwen's eyes looked worried. Who's Priya? Avern looked at me with a piercing, intelligent gaze. He was dressed casually, and his dark brown hair was falling into his eyes. He always looked like he needed a haircut. I had forgotten he was in the room. I was going to have to explain why I had been keeping things from him. I dropped my gaze. She's a human. You don't have time to beat around the bush. Anders looked at Avrin. He bonded with her. A look of betrayal crossed Avrin's face. Why didn't you tell me? He looked at Anders and Gwen. And why did you tell these guys? Am I the only one who doesn't know? I shook my head, unwilling to meet his eyes. Anders is the only one, and Gwen too, I suppose. It's complicated. I didn't intend to keep it from you. Forgive me if I don't believe you. Gwen shook her head. Alex, you're not explaining yourself well at all. I rubbed my hands over my face. I'm sorry. I'm having a bit of a breakdown right now. The worst thing imaginable just happened, and I'm not thinking clearly. She gave me a dirty look, mixed with a hint of compassion. You don't need to know every detail, Avrin. Priya was on our ship and no one knew about her. Alex found her. They fell in love. Avrin's eyebrows shot up. That's quite a bit of detail already. They formed a bond. I had thought Gwen was finished speaking, but it seemed like she wasn't going to stop. But you're not married, right? Don't tell me I missed my brother's wedding, too. Avrin looked flabbergasted. Of course not. I couldn't stop the words from coming out of my mouth. Do you know anyone who would perform a secret marriage ceremony in the bowels of the ship? Do you have to do this right now? Gwen stepped between us. Apparently she's been discovered. We were trying to figure out the best way to help her off the ship, but I guess that's out of the question. You picked the wrong brother. Avrin gave Anders a dark look. I would have told you to move her immediately. That's the same thing I said. Anders leaned forward. It's not my fault he doesn't listen. Gwen jumped to defend me again. Alex was doing what he thought was necessary to protect his bondmate. It was nothing personal. He didn't want to tell us either. You'll understand better when you find your bondmate, Avrin. Anders' comment must have infuriated Avrin, who was usually the calmest person in the room. You think I don't understand because I'm single? No, that's not what he's saying at all. I wanted Avrin to keep his cool. When Avrin lost control, it was a sight to behold. I didn't need either of my brothers to be angry today. I needed their help. The bond is intense. You'll see. I never could have imagined it before I experienced it. Anders must have realized the extent of Avrin's anger and was trying to calm him down. It has nothing to do with being single. No one knows until they bond with someone. Avrin seemed to accept the explanation. Let's put aside the fact that you didn't feel I was trustworthy enough to share your secret. Avrin looked at me viciously. What's father going to do with her? I shrugged. I don't know. I went down to see her. The lights were on and a lot of people were looking around. When I reached the holding cells, they said the king had given them explicit orders. No one is allowed to approach the prisoner. I don't think she's dangerous. Gwen was still in her blue pilot's uniform and wore her red hair in a braid behind her back. Anders wasn't wearing his flight gear and must have changed already. I thought I could explain things to Father when they were transporting her. I paused before telling a half-truth. I was too late. She was already on the prison ship. I was too ashamed to say I might have had a chance to stop them if I had thrown myself on my father's mercy and begged for her release. Maybe things would have turned out differently if I had the courage to tell him she was my bondmate. But I hadn't, and I knew Priya had seen me. I was going to make it right. 
I would save Priya and atone for my past mistakes. I'm going to take her, and I need your help. Astonishment was the only expression on the faces in front of me. That wouldn't be my first choice. Anders looked me in the eye. How about hiring a lawyer or asking father for leniency? You're going to try and break her out of jail? You'll make her break another law, and we'll be complicit. Avron looked at the ceiling, contemplating my idea. I'm not leaving her. I jumped up and turned toward the door. If you won't help me, I'll do it myself. I felt their stares. Alex, Anders called out behind me. Alex! He suddenly appeared between me and the door. Wait. Get out of my way, Anders. He rolled his eyes. I'm not trying to stop you, asshole. I'm going to help you. Me too, Gwen piped up. You're not leaving me behind. I felt my shoulders drop. Really? You'll help me? Anders reached out and clapped a hand on my shoulder. Anything for my baby brother. I won't let you do this alone. I know how important Priya is to you. I didn't think I had a shot before, but now I might have a chance. I'm coming too. Avrin sounded quiet but determined. What? I raised an eyebrow. Why do you want to join the party? You don't pay them any mind, but you decide to ask me questions? He was getting upset again. I wondered if things were happening which he hadn't shared with me. Maybe I should have been paying closer attention to him. Avern and I had always been close. We were the youngest brothers. After the others grew up, we only had each other. I had been so preoccupied with Priya lately that I had hardly seen him. No wonder he was angry. I had been ignoring him, and there might be something wrong. The world didn't revolve around me. My brothers were the most important thing to me after Priya, and I should act like it. It's an unexpected offer, that's all. Avrin was a bookworm, always reading, studying, or learning. Arnon liked to tell a story about young Avrin. He wanted to dress nicely, and when he would fall and get his clothes dirty, he cried until someone brushed them off and cleaned him up again. When Anders and I would go planetside to hike, Avrin always turned down the offer to come with us. He worked out, but in a gym and on a precise training schedule. Avrin was strong and had studied martial arts. He had defended me plenty of times when I was little. But he didn't usually seek out trouble. Well, I'm offering. You never wanted to come with us on adventures before. Did he actually say the word adventure? Gwen muttered under her breath. Anders shushed her. I never took my eyes off Avrin. Things are going to be messy and out of control, Avrin. I can handle messy. Avrin glowered at me. What you're saying is that you don't want me to help you. A look of realization dawning on his face. You don't have to try and protect my feelings. The room went silent. I hesitated before I spoke. It's not that at all. My hesitation had been too long. Avrin strode to the door and let himself out. Alex, that was the opposite of smooth. I'm surprised you were able to win Priya. You screwed up. Anders shook his head. Avrin vanished into one of the transporters before I could stop him. Did I want him to help me or not? I didn't want two older brothers bossing me around instead of one. Anders had started treating me as an equal recently, and he already knew about Priya, which is why I had asked for his help. He still told me what to do too often for my liking, but I didn't have a choice. I needed a pilot. But I had always sensed an air of superiority from Avrin, as if our slight difference in age meant he was somehow better than me. I loved him, but I didn't need any extra stress. I knew I was going to bring him along. I wouldn't let him think I didn't want him to come. It wasn't right. I caught up with him as he was going into his apartment. I stuck my arm into the door before it closed. If I let his anger fester, he might hold a grudge for days. Avrin, please. 
I didn't mean it. I just didn't think this was something you would approve of. How do you remember what I like or don't like? I haven't seen you in ages. There it was. Avrin was a bit of a loner and was always thinking. We saw each other on a regular basis until Priya came along. He must have noticed my absence. I hadn't given any reason for it since I'd become slightly obsessed with my new mate. I'm here now. He relented and let me into the room. The door silently closed behind us as I stepped through. Look, we need a brain with us. His gray eyes were angry and hurt. I'm sorry. I want your help. Anders and Gwen are great pilots and can think on their feet, but if we need someone to figure out a technical problem, you're the guy. Come back with me. We'll learn what to do as we go along. Chapter 15 Priya The door slid open and a guard appeared. Stand on your feet. I got up immediately. Earlier, I had decided I didn't have to obey them right away and received a black eye for my independent thinking. It hurt like a bitch and I had learned my lesson. A woman pointed a sidearm at me. I could see she had it set to lethal, which seemed like overkill. I wasn't going to hurt anyone. You're supposed to move, too. She motioned me to follow the other guard into the hall. I wondered where they were taking me, but I knew better than to ask. I followed the guard out of the ship and onto a space station. I tried to stop for a minute and look around, but someone prodded me in the back with a gun and made me nervous. They brought me into the space station. People gave me nervous looks, probably wondering what terrible crime I had committed that warranted guards and a yellow jumpsuit. I glanced at the planet through the window. It was bright, red, and evil-looking. I shivered, feeling uneasy. We arrived at a different docking bay, and they transferred me into a shuttle. I risked asking a question and tried not to cringe. Are we going down to the red planet? I hoped they would answer my question instead of punching me. It has a name. The planet is called Graindell. And yes, we're taking you planetside to your new home, the Galactic Penitentiary. The man leading the way answered me. He seemed to be less of a jerk than the woman. I did not want to stay here for a second longer. I had kept my memories of Alex locked in the corner of my mind. Thinking about him was going to make me lose control. If I didn't remember anything about him, I could still function. I felt like a robot, but I wouldn't go insane. I watched the pilot as we departed the space station and entered the atmosphere. As soon as we approached the planet, the air in the shuttle seemed to heat up. Sweat began to beat on my forehead, and I wiped it away. The guards were ready. One of them pulled out a cloth and started wiping down his face. He didn't offer anything to me except advice. I hope you like heat. Everyone jumped into action when the shuttle touched down. Hurry up and get her out of here. The pilot opened the door and the guards hustled me onto the landing platform. You know these shuttles start to malfunction after a few minutes because of the weather down here. Set your timers and be back in ten minutes. If you're not here, I'm leaving without you. The pilot wasn't bluffing. My escorts pushed me across the platform toward a small building. As the guard unlocked the door by scanning his retina, I stared at my surroundings in fear. Graindell was a volcanic planet. Red molten rock stretched as far as I could see, interspersed with floating platforms connected by bridges. As I watched, the bridges retracted into the metal structures, making it impossible to move between them. It was the perfect place for a prison. There was nowhere for anyone to go. Falling into the lava meant instant death. As long as the planet itself was secure, it didn't matter if a prisoner escaped. They would come back to jail just to escape the heat. The guards pushed me into the building and through several locking doors. We ended up in a small room without windows. They left the handcuffs on me. Someone will pick you up and bring you to the prison. We're in a holding station. The man seemed sorry for me. 
We're supposed to have handed you over already, but they're not here yet. You might as well try to enjoy yourself. After they lock you up, you're going to think of your time here as a vacation. I nodded. They closed the door, leaving me alone. I felt helpless. I wasn't going to be a free woman again for the rest of my life. I felt an overwhelming grief about Alex and everything I had lost. But I couldn't let myself wallow in pity. I needed to be strong to face the challenges ahead of me. Letting sorrow destroy me would not allow me to function. I wasn't going to throw myself into the lava outside. As bad as my life felt right now, I had a lot more living to do, no matter how much it might hurt. Alex The malevolent red planet filled the viewscreen. I could feel my palms begin to sweat at the sight of the ball of lava holding my bondmate. We couldn't make a mistake. We'll arrive on Graindell in twenty minutes, Gwen checked her console. Activating our cloak. Once we're undetectable, I'm going to reprogram their alarm system. It's supposed to trigger as soon as a spaceship enters the atmosphere. We'll have about an hour to do everything before their software comes back online. If we're not out of there in time, we'll be sitting ducks for the defenses in orbit around the planet. They're configured to fire missiles at any unknown spacecraft. I wasn't planning on staying there anyway. I tapped my fingers on my outer thigh as I walked back and forth on the tiny ship. Sit down and put your belt on, Alex. Anders motioned to the chair. You never know when we're going to run into trouble. Even though I didn't want to sit still, I knew they were doing me a favor. I plopped down in the second gunner seat next to Avrin and buckled the belts in an X across my chest. The ship wasn't designed to run with every seat full. It was going to be crowded in here once we had Priya on board. Gwen turned in her seat so she could see Avrin and me in the back, and Anders beside her. We'll disrupt their alarm system, fly into the atmosphere, and wait. Once they start transferring Priya from the holding station into the shuttle for transport to the prison, we'll dart in there grab her, and get the hell out of there. Right. Anders nodded his head. At that point, we turn on the hyperdrive and bounce all over the galaxy to throw them off our trail. I was impressed at how well Anders and Gwen worked together. My heart clenched as I wondered if Priya and I would ever have what they had. Where are we taking you? They both looked at me expectantly. I don't know. My mind was blank. All I had thought about was getting Priya back. Are you guys going to hide somewhere? I assume we're not going back to the mothership to tell father and have a real wedding. I grimaced. I don't think that's such a good idea. Let's go to a place where the law can't find us and father won't either. What about Susan? Avrin suggested in a quiet voice. It's a large planet with a decent population. You could disappear in one of the cities, and no one would ever know. You could stay in the place with the university. What's it called again? Gwen frowned as she tried to remember. Deveran, Anders said. Avery had attended university on Susan earlier, and we had all visited him before. Avrin had completed some doctorate work, too. That's perfect, you guys. I was thinking about Susan before when Pry and I were trying to figure out where we could go. It must have slipped my mind. Gwen nodded sympathetically. If you need help, I'm sure the king would give you a hand in an emergency. Anders wasn't explicitly saying someone might come to grab Priya again. The king was an acquaintance of ours. Avern nodded. Find some lawyers while you're there. Maybe they can beat the stowaway charges. I don't think that's going to happen. I didn't have any hope. The only way out is if Father drops the charges himself. That's about as likely as Priya growing wings. Avrin looked at me with compassion. Have you tried talking to him? I barely know him. He's still your father, Alex. You said you were going to try and forgive him. That was before he took Priya from me. Avrin started to raise his voice. You didn't tell him she was your bondmate. It might have changed everything for him. 
What if you asked Arnon to talk to him for you? Maybe he could convince Father to drop the charges, Anders suggested. I perked up at the thought. If anyone was capable of changing Father's mind, it would be my oldest brother. Yes, that might actually work. I turned so I could see the red planet grow larger in the viewscreen. Before Arnon could help me, though, I would have to do something. My heart sank a little at the thought. I would have to tell Arnon I bonded with Priya already. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have to get her off Graindale first. We can worry about the rest later. Gwen touched my arm. I don't think Priya wants you to make all the decisions for her. She probably wants to determine her own future. My father had somehow managed to keep going after my mother died. I felt a pang of sympathy for him. How could he continue living his life, let alone take on the responsibility of saving our people? I had a flash of insight. His pain was driving him to make things better for everyone else. I was still hoping to get Priya back, and I felt terrible. The pain would be worse if I had no hope of ever seeing her again. For one moment, I completely understood my father. I no longer saw him as a cold, somewhat cruel and distant man. I knew how he felt when my mother died. It must have been hell. I wasn't ready to forgive him for hurting us, but I thought I understood why he did it. Anders looked up after a few minutes. We intercepted an announcement. Their alarm system is experiencing unexpected difficulties due to atmospheric disturbances. He grinned. Gwen slowed down the ship and circled the space station in a wide pattern, entering into the atmosphere from the concealed side of the planet. Anders, have you located Priya? I found her. We have a lock. He brought up her position onto the screen. This place is hot. Gwen wiped some sweat off her forehead. The heat made the bump on my headache, and I wished our flight was over already. I wanted to hold Priya in my arms again. Avrin felt the need to begin a lecture on the planet. It's so young that it hasn't begun to solidify into rock yet. The entire surface is molten lava. Land's cheap here. Several mining companies have moved their refineries to Graindale, and it's a perfect environment for prisons. The two industries have built inertron platforms and strategic locations to let people live here. What's inertron? Gwen lifted an eyebrow. It's an artificial element that is indestructible after processing. Lava won't touch it. I researched the planet on the way over here looking for useful information. Avrin, you don't have to prove anything to us. Gwen interrupted me. There it is. Our ship approached an inertron platform with a small building on it. I could sense Priya was inside. I felt a desperate energy fill my body, and I wanted to start moving right away. Anders took his hands off the controls. I'm holding our position. When we see them transfer Priya, we'll move in. All we can do is wait. All we've been doing is waiting. My muscles were becoming tense at the thought of having to sit still any longer. I don't think I can stand it. Anders glanced back at me. You're going to have to be patient. It shouldn't be much longer. Let me check and see when the shuttle is scheduled to pick her up. I bounced my leg restlessly beside Avern until he gave me an annoyed look, which I ignored. I was close to her, and every second away from her felt like too long. I needed her in a way I didn't think Avern could understand. As far as I knew, he had never been head over heels in love with a girl. There was one girl he dated for a while in college, but it ended abruptly. I suppose if I were in his shoes and saw me acting like a lovesick fool, I might be annoyed too. But I couldn't help it. We were close to ending the nightmare, but I was still deathly afraid for her. Found it. The exchange is scheduled for... Anders glanced at his screen and frowned. Something's wrong. Gwen leaned over and looked for herself. That's not good. She glanced back at me apprehensively. Let me out of here. I fumbled with my seatbelt. Avern put out his hand and stopped me from unbuckling. 
there's a backup system which automatically takes over whenever the central alarm system goes offline. Of course there is, Gwyn frowned at Anders. From the guilty look on his face, he felt like he should have covered all the possibilities. Anders cut to the chase. There's a force field around the recovery platform. We can't get through without the access codes. Do we have those lying around? I finally found my voice. Anders met my eyes. We'll need to generate them. Can our computers work fast enough for us to grab her? He shrugged before turning his chair back to the console. A determined look passed over his face. Gwen was frantically tapping at her computer. After a few minutes, she looked up at me and shook her head. We don't have enough processing power, Alex. If Anders can't get the codes, we're not going to be able to grab Priya. We'll have to come up with something else. The shuttle is approaching. She pointed at her screen. I swore in my native language, spitting out every dirty word I could imagine. Havran turned his head in my direction, giving me a reproachful look. He rarely used foul language. I desisted, holding my face in my hands. I wished I could calm down. I wasn't going to be useful to anyone if I was a basket case. Is the problem that a starship can't get through the force field? Gwen was the only one who turned to look at me. Anders was completely immersed in his computer. What do you mean? She looked confused. How does the force field work? Is a person small enough to pass? She turned back to her computer and pulled up a diagram. There are little bridges for emergencies. Nobody's going for pleasure walks on them. So? I impatiently jiggled my leg as I waited for Gwen to reach a conclusion. The field is coded for ships. How could a person reach the platform without a ship on a planet covered with lava? She gave me a meaningful look. You're thinking like a human, I grinned. What if a person had wings? Chapter 16 Alex Gwen grinned and turned to face her computer. I'll get you as close as I can before you're on your own. Wait, Alex. Do you know how dangerous it is to fly in these conditions? Avron reached out and grabbed my arm. The heat will create updrafts and erratic currents. You're going to have a hard time controlling your flight path. I shrugged, unbuckling and pulling off my shirt. Do I have a choice? I have to try. Pry is the only thing that matters to me. Avron looked like he didn't understand. Without her, I'll be like father. A glimmer of empathy dawned in his eyes. He decided to try another tactic. Anders, are you going to let him go through with this? Anders didn't answer him. Avron raised his voice. Are you listening to me? Gwen decided to take matters into her own hands and shoved an elbow into Anders' ribs. You're fine with him flying down by himself and getting Priya? Anders looked up. He had a blank expression on his face. Anders had been entirely concentrating on a task and hadn't been listening to any of us. What? His brain slowly caught up to his ears. No, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Alex, are you planning to fly down there yourself? It gives Priya the best chance. You won't be able to get the codes in time. I'll fly down, pick her up, and get back to the ship. He looked at me like I was out of my mind. Do you know how hard it will be to fly in these conditions? He looked at the surface of the planet. Havran just told me I was flying to my doom. Alex, you shouldn't do it. I wasn't going to let them tell me what to do again. Think about this. If Gwen was down there, would you sit around and wait for me to get the codes? Anders' eyes flicked across to his fiance, but he didn't answer. I stood up and deployed my wings without thinking about it. The pain was excruciating, but I wouldn't have been able to pull them out if I'd thought about it too much. Anticipating the pain could paralyze me. I could have used the changing room. Even though everyone would have heard me in agony, they wouldn't have seen me. But I had been thinking about Priya, not keeping up appearances. 
Once I could see and hear again, and the pain wasn't consuming my thoughts, I took a deep breath and looked around. The three of them were staring at me, transfixed. Their faces were white and aghast. Avrin looked like he was about to vomit. They hadn't seen me take out my wings since the infection. I was usually careful about doing it in private because I didn't want to make a scene. Avrin's voice was barely above a whisper. Is it always so bad, Alex? I looked back and forth between them. It's difficult for everyone. Don't worry about it. It's never been like that for me. Avrin's eyes filled with anguish. I had no idea it was so bad. I shrugged. There are some things I can't change, so I don't worry about them. I survive every single time. It will be okay, Avrin. I put a hand on his shoulder. He looked shaken. I wonder if I could do something about it. I frowned. What are you talking about? Never mind. Avern looked like he was thinking about something, but he wasn't ready to share it yet. You should focus on getting Priya. And be careful. I nodded. I've got it under control. I nodded at Gwen, and she opened the hatch on the floor. The guards have gone in already. They should be out any minute. She took a deep breath. I gave my wings a quick pump to work out the stiffness. Some rough flying was in front of me, and I wanted to be ready. Have a safe flight, brother. Anders looked like he was afraid he would never see me again. I'll be right back. I hoped I would be. I jumped before I lost my nerve. Chapter 17 Priya I was dozing on the cot when the sound of the door opening startled me out of my uneasy slumber. I opened my eyes to see two guards lurking outside the entrance. I sat up quickly. The manacles clinked as I wiped away the sweat, which was my only companion on this planet. One guard entered the room, keeping a gun trained on me. The other waited outside the door. It's time for you to move. We're taking you to your permanent destination. How long am I going to be there? I knew I shouldn't ask, but I couldn't help myself. I scrambled up as gracefully as I could, considering my hands were shackled. Do you know what the word permanent means, human? The guard looked like he was enjoying my dismay. I felt rage rising inside me. Nothing happening to me was my fault. I wasn't going to take what the guards dished out to me. I had to try and escape, even if it could mean more punishment. At least I would have tried. The best time to make a break for it would be when they moved me from the holding cell to the shuttle. The guard waved the gun at me, motioning for me to walk through the doorway. He followed behind me. I was sandwiched between the two until we arrived outside and they moved to my sides. It was hotter outside than in my room. The buildings probably had heat shielding. I wiped another drop of sweat, the heavy metal cuffs clanking on my wrists, and got an idea as we made our way to the shuttle. The guard who had spoken to me moved inside first, disappearing toward the captain's cabin. My chance came when the other guard looked off into the distance as if she heard something. I didn't know what she had spotted, but I wasn't going to let an opportunity pass. I lifted my arms and swung as hard as I could, hitting her in the head with the heavy metal cuffs. She dropped like a stone. I took off running, hoping the other guard wouldn't notice my disappearance. Even a small head start could be critical. I tore across the platform, looking around wildly for somewhere to go. As I approached the edge, I heard shouting rise behind me. I didn't turn around or stop running. I had spotted something I hoped would be my salvation. The platform was a solid block of smooth metal and dropped off in front of me. It wasn't melting, even though it sat in the middle of a pool of hot lava. I could see another platform below me. As I looked across the molten rock, a series of small platforms made a path across the lava to a larger platform in the distance. Unfortunately, there were no bridges between the platforms. They had retracted when we were landing. 
I didn't care. I thought I could jump the distance. I hesitated only for a moment before leaping over the railing and crashing to the ground. It had been about an eight-foot drop. My legs and ankles seemed to be working. I moved to the edge of the platform and stared across the gap. I wished those bridges were in place, but I couldn't do anything about it. I had to jump. I stood at the edge of the platform, out of breath, staring at the red-hot lava beneath my feet. The possibility of roasting to death by lava lurked just in front of me. It was better than the certainty of a slow death in prison. I looked behind me. The guards hadn't made it across the first platform yet. I could hear the sound of footsteps pounding, though, so I didn't have much time. Without thinking too much, I took a few steps back and started to run before I jumped, landing on the other platform with my heart pounding against my chest. I was still alive. A shot rang out and hit the platform next to me. I recoiled, looking back. The guard had his blaster out and was aiming in my direction. I couldn't stop. I sped across each platform, leaping over the gaps. After each landing, I took a moment to steady myself before taking off again. Another shot caught the back of my leg and burned my calf. I stumbled, clutching my leg. If the guard hit me again, it might not kill me, but it would make me an easy target. The good thing about having to jump between platforms was that the guard had to perform the same acrobatic maneuvers I did, which reduced the amount of time he had to shoot at me. I knew my luck couldn't hold forever. I landed awkwardly on the next jump and fell over as pain shot through my leg. I was going to have problems running if I twisted my ankle. Despair filled my body as I tried to stand. An energy blast barely missed me as I fell again. The pain in my ankle made me gasp. The guard was two platforms away, making his way toward me. He seemed to be taking his time now that I was injured. I tried to stand again, but couldn't put any weight on my leg. The guard spoke into his communicator. The prison shuttle lifted off in the distance and surged toward us. I wasn't going to let them take me back. The guard jumped to the neighboring platform as the shuttle approached. I closed my eyes, squeezing back tears of frustration and anger. God damn it! Suddenly, I heard the flapping of wings in the air as Alex appeared out of nowhere above me. It was like a dream. He vigorously pumped his wings as a gust of wind threatened to push him off course. He landed roughly on the platform, face tight with strain. Get on my back, Priya. He glanced frantically at the guard who was both running and shooting at us. He pulled me to my feet, making the chains from my handcuffs clank together. I put most of my weight on my good foot. Alex had rejected me earlier. What was he doing here? If I didn't want to go back to jail, I had to take his offer. I would have to worry about the details of our relationship later. I reached up. Despite the wrenching pain in my burning calf and twisted ankle, I managed to climb onto my bondmate's back and wrap my legs around him. I had to lift my handcuffs over his head, leaving the chain dangling over his chest. The guard was almost upon us. Alex jumped and shot straight up. Wings beating against the air as we flew out of sight into the smoky atmosphere of Graindell. A stiff gust of warm air pushed us off course and he struggled to counter it. Another updraft lifted us higher. I don't know how long we flew, but I remember spotting the fighter, which I imagined had Gwen and Anders at the helm. I felt a rush of relief. It was over. I was free and safe. But what would happen between Alex and me? I never expected to see him again. When Jerry had rejected me, telling me I wasn't good enough for him, I had certainly never seen him again. I didn't want to either. It was hard to admit I had expected the same of Alex. I should have known better. Alex was my bondmate, not some jerk of an ex-boyfriend. I wasn't sure I could forgive him. The wounds he had inflicted cut deeply, and I didn't know how to heal them. Alex. I flew up and through the hatch in the bottom of our spacecraft carrying Priya on my back. As soon as she slid off, I turned and pulled her into my arms, holding her tightly. She clung to me for a minute, but suddenly pushed me away. Priya promptly collapsed on her bad leg. 
I picked her up and set her down on the couch in the changing room. When I looked into her eyes, what I saw was painful. She didn't look happy to see me. Is something the matter, Priya? You rejected me. No matter what you said, I wasn't good enough to be the bondmaid of a prince. She was furious. I felt like she had stabbed me in the heart. I hadn't rejected her. On the contrary, I had gone out of my way to find her. In the deepest corner of my mind, I had to admit that I should have done something when Priya was still on the mothership. I might have convinced my father to release her if I had been willing to talk to him. Instead, I had taken the coward's way out. I was happy she was safe, but what was I going to do if she hated me? Gwen interrupted my thoughts. Strap in! We're leaving! Priya tried to stand under her own power, but her ankle gave out instantly. I grabbed her, supporting her and taking her weight in my arms. Avrin moved past us into one of the seats in the changing room. The gunner's chairs are open. They would be more comfortable than the emergency seats. I carried Priya to the back of the ship. As soon as we reached the seats, she moved over as far away from me as possible, making sure our legs didn't touch. It didn't look good. We'll discuss this later. There's nothing to talk about, Alex. Priya closed her restraints and I had no choice but to follow suit. Gwen and Anders were eager to leave. As soon as I was buckled in, the ship lurched into motion, launching toward the atmosphere and into space. Take a look at this, Gwen. Anders stared at a dozen blinking red lights on the screen. As soon as we're out of danger, we'll have to service the ship. That planet was a big problem. I'll say. Gwen didn't take her eyes off her screen. Her hands hovered over the console as she flew us to safety. Give me a couple of hours to get them off our tail. We'll find somewhere to stop. We spent six long, stressful hours evading the prison authorities. Gwen managed to lose them somewhere in the Outer Rim. Avrin found a cheap hotel to spend the night. Anders paid for all of us using assumed names. Once I took a look at the place, I wasn't sure if we needed to bother with fake names. It seemed like the sort of place where they didn't ask too many questions. I bound Pry's ankle with a tensor bandage from the ship's first aid kit and covered the burn on her calf. She would still walk with a limp, but she would be able to move around by herself. When we dropped the ship off for the necessary repairs, the mechanic told us he believed it would be ready within a day. Priya had been wearing long underwear under her prison jumpsuit. She had found a pair of Gwen's pants in the changing room, which were a little too big for her. She had rolled up the pants to make them fit. Her outfit would make her stand out in the crowd, so Gwen picked up some clothes for her from the gift shop in the hotel, letting Priya pass for a typical Outer Rim tourist. Anything would beat the bright yellow prison jumpsuit she arrived in. The other three stayed in a suite with two bedrooms and a common area. Priya and I had a room to ourselves even though we clearly didn't need privacy. She had been looking at me like I was an Aussie monster who had stolen something from her. I didn't have any illusions about getting lucky tonight. The way things were going, I would be fortunate if she spoke to me. We said goodnight to the others and reluctantly trudged into the room. Priya didn't look at me or say a word. Priya, what happened to your eye? Her stare could have burned a hole through my head. One of the guards punched me when I didn't move fast enough. In case you forgot, I've been in prison, Alex. Guilt twisted my stomach into knots. What had I done? And how could she ever forgive me? I'm going to take a shower. She limped off to the bathroom carrying the clothes Gwen had purchased for her. I threw myself into a chair. Maybe the hot water would calm Priya down. When she emerged thirty minutes later, she still refused to talk. The bathroom's open. She wrinkled her nose at me. I sniffed as discreetly as I could. I needed a shower, too. It was hot on the lava planet, and I had been sweating profusely. I can take a shower in a minute. Your bandage needs changing, and I have to rewrap the tensor. 
It can wait. I took the hint and grabbed my overnight bag as I went into the bathroom. When I emerged a few minutes later, showered and changed, I realized any conversation would have to wait. Priya was sleeping peacefully on her side of the bed. I felt frustrated. I wanted to clear the air with Priya, but I knew she had been through a lot and would need some time to recover. I wondered if it was selfish of me to want immediate forgiveness. Priya looked beautiful while she was sleeping. Her black hair was still damp and there were dark circles under her eyes, but she was a gorgeous creature. Trying not to disturb her, I rewrapped the tensor bandage on her swollen ankle and carefully applied salve and a bandage to the burn. She was so exhausted that she didn't even stir. I shouldn't have put her through this. All I had to do was speak with my father. She was right to be mad at me. I'd been a complete asshole. But I still loved her. I crawled into bed with her, pulling her against my chest and wrapping my arms around her. She made a contented sound and relaxed against me. Maybe things were going to work out after all. Priya couldn't be mad at me forever, could she? Priya I woke the next morning feeling happy. I immediately wondered why. It had been many days since I had awakened feeling good, and it surprised me. I opened my eyes and felt strong arms holding me, a hard, hot chest pressing into my back, and something else, hot and hard, pushing against my ass. I had the urge to rub against it, but I resisted as memories came rushing back. The happiness I felt at waking in Alex's arms was quickly replaced by anger and a deep sense of betrayal. Holding me wasn't going to change the past. He had let me go to jail without bothering to make a half-hearted attempt at stopping it so he wouldn't look bad in front of his family. What a bastard! I tried to work my way free from under his arm, but he was heavy. When I wriggled around, I felt his cock pulse against me, and his hand drifted down to my breast. I drew in a shaky breath as he squeezed, pinching the nipple. I was mad at him. I wasn't going to fuck him. I hadn't realized how much our bond could affect my mind. My body had different goals for me and allowed Alex's other hand to drift down to my panties. I had taken off all my new clothes for sleeping except a t-shirt and panties. His finger circled my clit. All the days and nights of missing him coalesced into an all-consuming desire I couldn't control. I could fuck him one time. It was something for myself, and I didn't need to feel guilty about it. I would unload on Alex later. Fucking him didn't mean forgiveness. I knew it was true, but having a bond with Alex was different from my other relationships. Even though I was furious about his betrayal, I couldn't dump him like I would any other guy. We were going to have to work through the conflict. If we didn't, I sensed the alternative would be a lifetime of misery for us. I needed him, both the physical release and the relief of tension. We could talk when I was satisfied. My thoughts were interrupted when Alex slid a finger inside me. I gasped. All thoughts of resistance left my mind. He lifted up my shirt to get better access to my breasts, molding them and squeezing until I could hardly breathe. With one quick movement, he pulled my panties down, being careful to lift them over the bandages. I felt him push into me from behind. I tilted my pelvis to give him a better angle, and we both sighed as he slid home. I've missed you, Priya. His voice made me shiver. I didn't answer him. I just pushed against him, trying to communicate what I needed without using words. He pulled out and pushed inside again, thrusting in a slow and steady rhythm while his hands played with my breasts and clit. The buildup was slow, but the orgasm was mind-blowing. I cried out as it shook me, and he took the speed up a notch, plunging into me and pounding against my ass. I writhed against Alex until I felt his muscles tense. He pressed his hips hard against me and groaned. I felt him fill me to the brim as my blissful contractions milked every drop of cum from him. When he pulled out, I missed him immediately. 
I lay there in a post-orgasmic daze, not wanting to move or think about the future. Priya? Alex's deep voice was rough, and my hips bucked again at the sexy sound. We need to talk. Chapter 18 Alex Even though she didn't move, I knew she heard me. I tried again. Priya? She sighed and struggled beneath the covers. My gaze was drawn immediately to her breasts as she managed to sit up. When she noticed where I was looking, she pulled up the covers, and I reluctantly dragged my eyes to her face. Priya was lovely, but right now her eyes burned with anger. I remembered how she used to look at me as if I was a hero from her dreams. I wish she could feel the same way again. If we ever got back to a good place, it wouldn't be from wishing, but from talking. I knew how to start. I'm sorry. She stared at me for a long time before frowning. You're sorry, Alex? You let them take me to jail. I know. The guilt was suffocating me. I should have said something, but everything happened too quickly. My family has been all I've had for a long time. They're the most important people in the world to me, next to you. I was babbling and doing a poor job of saying what I meant. They're the most important people in the world to you. Priya's eyes lost all expression as if she was trying to hide her feelings. She wouldn't look at me. Well, that explains a lot. What we have is something new. I'm not used to putting anything ahead of my family. I'm not asking you to do that, but I'm supposed to be your bondmate. I need to be on the same level at least. You are, Priya. I'm putting us first. Anders and Gwen are going to drop us off on Susan. We'll figure a way to explain away the charges and get a solid footing for our relationship. She turned her head to me. Do you mean it? Of course. I took her hands. I don't want to take you away from your family, Alex. I know how close you are to your brothers. I shook my head. There's nothing else to do. There was a knock at the door. Alex. It was Anders's voice. Open up. We have a problem. Priya. I felt like the entire model on family had gathered around me in the suite. I sat on the couch with my injured leg stretched out beside me. I was comfortable enough with Gwen and Anders, but I didn't know Avrin very well. He made me nervous. What's this all about? Alex was sitting next to me. Anders stood up. I just spoke with Father. Alex grew pale. What was the conversation about? You know he has his informants everywhere. He learned Priya escaped. Anders took a moment to let the information sink in. His spies also mentioned that the starship picking her up looked suspiciously similar to one of our new fighters. You've got to be kidding me. I wish I was. Our father, being an intelligent man, realized we weren't around at the same time everything was going down. He called and summoned me home. He suspects we saved Priya, and he wants to know why. Well, that's that. Alex stood up and started pacing. He couldn't sit still when he was upset. You have to bring us to Susan. I won't let them take Priya again. Alex, do you want to live like that? Avrin said in a quiet voice. The only way you can be free with Priya is if the charges against her are dropped. You need father to do something for you. Alex turned sad eyes on his brother. I can't ask father for a favor. He doesn't even like me. Why would he do it? Anders walked over to Alex. You're his son. I know he hasn't been the world's best dad, but it wasn't on purpose. You should give him a chance. I would have to tell Arnon, too. Anders gave him a compassionate look. He'll understand, or he'll have to get over it. You don't always get what you want. I agree with Anders. Avrin had been thinking for a long time. You should come back to the ship and talk to everyone. It's the best chance for you and Priya. 
I don't think I can do it. Alex looked miserable. Father will belittle us and refuse to drop the charges. I don't want to face our nun at all. Alex, everyone's eyes turned to me. What will happen if we don't return to your father's ship? No one spoke for a moment. You're going to be on the run for the rest of your lives. Avram put a hand on Alex's shoulder. If you can't give father a good reason to drop the charges, he might even hire a bounty hunter. Father can be relentless when he wants to be. Priya being your bondmate is a pretty good reason, Alex. Alex shook his head. I can't take the chance he'll send her back to prison. Gwen spoke up. Your father let Arnon and Jane stay together even though she's a carrier, Alex. He may not be as hard-hearted as you imagine. Jane has the gene? I was stunned by the revelation. And she's allowed to be married to the crown prince? She has fraternal twins, a boy and a girl. Gwen was trying to give me hope. Carrying the gene doesn't mean you can't have a girl. It's just unlikely. Alex, I didn't know that before. Maybe your father wouldn't mind me. Alex came over and knelt before me, staring up into my eyes. I don't think this is a good idea. I didn't want to call him out in front of everyone, but I had to. I know you're afraid to disappoint your family, Alex. If I'm important to you, I think you have to do it. Alex couldn't look at me. What if I can't? I stood up. Then maybe I don't mean as much to you as you think. I walked out the door without looking at anyone. Alex The room fell silent after Priya left. Anders spoke first. She has a point. You know we love you, Alex, but you're always worried about keeping everyone else happy. You hardly ever think about your own happiness. Or Priya's in this case. It's true, Alex, Avron nodded. His agreement was as surprising as it was convincing. Avron didn't readily agree with people. He would never give voice to an opinion for the sole purpose of pleasing someone. In a sense, he was the opposite of me. If he was voicing an opinion, he had spent a lot of time thinking about it. His advice was usually sound, because he didn't offer it unless he thought it was helpful. I didn't relish the thought of confronting my family. It would be easier for me to run forever than have a conversation with my father and Arnon. It made me sick to my stomach. Avery wouldn't care, but both of them would have a fit when they learned what I had done. I was in an impossible situation. And once I overcame that obstacle, I would have to beg him to drop the charges against Priya. Ever since I had stopped expecting my father to show me love or attention, I hadn't intentionally avoided asking him for anything. But having to ask him for something so important was humiliating. What if he denied me again as he had in the past? What if I asked for what I needed and he said no? Priya and I would have to run if he didn't have guards waiting to arrest us. I always preferred to avoid any painful and embarrassing conversations. We could skip to the flight immediately. Anders interrupted my thoughts. Alex, what are you going to do? Can you do something for me? Tell Father we'll only return if Priya is under his protection while we are on the ship. He has to promise amnesty while we explain things. He nodded. Maybe you should talk to him yourself. No! My voice came out a little too loudly. I checked myself. No, just set it up for me. I'll talk to him when we get there. Okay, Alex. For the record, I think you made the right choice. I hoped he was right. My heart couldn't take losing Priya again. Priya As we walked off the shuttle onto the ship, I tried to remain calm but felt my stomach lurch. I had spent months here hiding illegally. Walking around in the bright light of day had me feeling anxious. The last time my feet were on this deck, they arrested me and threw me into prison. Alex sensed my distress and squeezed my hand. It would be easy to let him comfort me, but I didn't know how he would handle the pressure of confronting his family. 
When we bonded, I never thought about the ramifications. On Earth, having sex outside of marriage was an everyday occurrence. But something different had happened with us, and now I was bonded with an Azim man. There were new expectations. I didn't realize Alex and I would be breaking cultural taboos. How would his family look at me? Would they think I was a slut? Was I simply earth trash? I swallowed hard and wondered if they would stone me. I hadn't seen any rocks on the ship, but a verbal assault would be almost as bad. I had to remember I was here to support Alex. It shouldn't matter what anyone said about me. We followed Anders and Gwen down the hall. Avrin was walking behind us. Where are we going? I whispered. Father asked to meet in the throne room. I think he's trying to intimidate me. When we reached the room, Anders entered first. It seemed like he was the only member of the family who wasn't bothered by the king. The rest of them seemed either angry or afraid of their father. I remembered my last conversation with the king. My body tensed up when I saw him. He sat on an imposing throne and wore regal expensive clothing. It probably didn't impress the brothers, but I was in awe of his attire. Although he was an older man, his face was handsome, and I could see his sons inherited their good looks from him. Anders and Avrin approached the throne. Alex gave my hand one last squeeze before he left me with Gwen and went to stand by his brothers. The king's gaze went to Alex, who didn't say anything. He looked sullen. Alex. The king stared at him with hard eyes. Father. Alex didn't bother with small talk. What do you want? I'd like an explanation to start. The last time I saw this criminal, I sent her to prison. Why is she standing on my ship and in your company? I wondered why the king was looking at me so strangely, and remembered I looked as if I had been in a bar fight. I wondered if he felt sorry for me. Perhaps he hadn't realized I might be beaten or mistreated. Alex stared at his father, and I held my breath. Would he stand up to him, or would he give in to his old habits? I found her. Alex looked guilty. I let out a breath. At least he hadn't said he didn't know me. You found her on a prison planet. His father frowned and seemed surprised by the answer. Who is she to you? Alex avoided the question. Some people on Earth were going to hurt her. Priya inadvertently wound up aboard one of the shuttles returning to the ship. She couldn't find her way back to Earth before we left. Her intentions don't matter, only her actions. He didn't call me a criminal. We were making progress. Father, have mercy. She doesn't deserve to go to prison. Anyone can make a mistake. His voice had a pleading tone, but his father's face was unrelenting. Can you drop the charges? You're right, but it doesn't mean we ignore the clear intent of the law. Alex turned away and gave me a desperate glance. I dropped my eyes. He was giving up and wasn't going to tell his father about us. How can I trust him to be my partner if he wouldn't stand up to his father and admit I was his bondmate? I tried to stay calm, but I was so angry I could hardly stand it. When I glanced at Gwen beside me, she shook her head, looking furious. Anders spoke up. Father, Alex is right. She's harmless. We can set her down on the next planet. Relax a little. The king gave Anders a dirty look, but I thought I could see some amusement in his eyes. Why don't you think about it for a day? Avrin always sounded like the voice of reason. You always tell Arnon a king doesn't make rash decisions. The king looked at his fourth son. When Avrin spoke, people listened. All right, if you're all united against me, I will consider my decision for one day. I will meet all of you here tomorrow. All of us? Anders looked puzzled. Arnon and Avery too? His father nodded. And Jane and L. Thank you for your time, father. Chapter 19 Alex Gwen and Priya walked ahead of us along the corridor leading away from the throne room. As soon as we had taken a few steps down the hall, Anders turned to me. 
What is the matter with you, Alex? I looked at him, surprised by the anger in his voice. Nothing. You've got a problem. Why didn't you tell father that Priya is your bondmate? Anders shoved me against the wall. I rubbed my shoulder. Avrin's stare was disapproving. He's right, Alex. Your behavior in there was stupid and insulting. You shouldn't feel insulted. We're talking about Priya, not us. Anders looked me in the eye. You can be a real idiot sometimes. She must be furious with you. I hadn't thought about how Priya would feel if I didn't tell father about her. I wanted to protect us from his ridicule. I didn't want to deal with any insults and slurs disguised as compliments. I didn't want her to think I was ashamed of her. I didn't need to tell him. I knew the argument was weak as soon as I said it. He had begun to reconsider his position already. You're a fool. Anders shook his head. Nothing you've done will matter if Priya tosses you out the door. She's human, not Azim. She may love you now, but she'll get over you if she decides you aren't worth it. Avrin spoke up. You, on the other hand, are from Azim. You'll never get over her if she decides to leave because you won't claim her. They had a point. In front of us, Priya and Gwen were whispering in heated tones. Gwen glanced back at me with a look that could have torn me to shreds. I slowed to a halt. Gwen and Priya disappeared around a corner. I never thought of it that way. You can't keep thinking only about yourself. Anders held out his arm to stop me from running after Priya. You have to think about Priya, too. I know. I was feeling irritated. They were telling me what to do again. Swallow your pride. Be prepared to kneel and grovel when you get back to your room. Anders changed the subject abruptly. When was the last time you flew? I didn't remember. It had been longer than four days, and it made me sick to my stomach to think about it. My brothers must have seen the dismay on my face. Get out of here, Alex. Avrin sounded concerned. We'll take care of Priya. She'll see you soon. Okay. The word was barely out of my mouth before I started running toward the flight room. Ten minutes later, I soared straight up. I could barely see the top of the room reaching high above me. It felt good to stretch my wings. There weren't many of us flying. Most people were at the top of the room. I enjoyed the privacy. It gave me a chance to gather my thoughts. In here, I could see I was being immature about my father. How could I hate him and still be scared of him? I was an adult. It was time to tell him the truth. I needed to stand up to him. If he disowned me, Priya and I would go somewhere else. My heart pounded in my chest at the thought of defying him. If I damaged our relationship further, he might abandon me, just like Mother did. I didn't remember much about her. My earliest recollections were of fear that my brothers and my father would disappear and I would be alone. I supposed the same concerns were guiding my behavior. How else could I explain it? Flying always cleared my head. I knew I would have to stand up to my father and tell him about Priya, no matter how terrified I was. When I returned home, Priya had already fallen asleep. I watched her rest peacefully before taking a shower, crawling into bed next to her, and going to sleep. Priya When Alex was asleep, all the problems were gone. The worry lines were smoothed out. He looked like an absolute angel. But I still had to leave. Gwen had told me Elle threatened to divorce Avery. It was the only way they wound up staying together. She needed to make him realize he loved her. When we discussed my situation yesterday, we had decided Alex needed a good old-fashioned kick in the ass. I was leaving, but I didn't want to. Gwen was going to fly me to a planet where I could hide for a while. She gave me the funds for a couple of nights in a hotel, again under an assumed name, but still using Model on credits. I didn't want to use the joint account Alex had set up for us. I was worried he would be able to track my location. Now that I had a criminal record, my Earth accounts were probably frozen. 
After a few days, I would gauge his reaction. If he spoke with his father or Gwen, showing he truly cared about me, I would return. I hadn't given any thought to what I would do if anything else happened. It wouldn't end well for either one of us. I understood where Alex was coming from and why he was behaving the way he was, but he couldn't use it as an excuse. He needed to stand up to his father and tell the truth to his brothers. He was his own man and could make his own choices. I also wanted to know if he thought I was important enough to do something he didn't want to do. Otherwise, what kind of relationship would we have? It was one thing to start off in hiding due to unusual circumstances. It was another thing entirely to skulk around in the shadows indefinitely because he had family issues. I stopped staring at my bondmate and quietly grabbed my packed bag, letting myself out of the apartment without a sound. I kept to the back corridors out of habit as I made my way to the docking bay. Gwen hadn't told anyone about our scheme, and I hoped she hadn't had trouble sneaking out while Anders was sleeping. The bay was practically empty. Only one ship was active today. It must be ours. I didn't see any sign of her, and the door wasn't locked. My streak of good luck was holding. As soon as Gwen arrived, we could fly out of here. I opened the door and climbed into the shuttle, carefully closing the door behind. I turned around and froze with a sharp intake of breath. Sitting in the pilot seat was the King of Azim, Crindle Madelon, Alex's father. I stared at the king without making a sound. To my surprise, his expression changed first. A smile broke out on his face, catching me off guard and completely changing his appearance. We have to stop meeting this way, Miss... Bat. I could barely think, but at least I could remember my last name. Miss Bot, I suppose you weren't expecting to see me here. Not at all. He nodded, then steepled his fingers together. You're an interesting person, you know? I wondered if I was interesting enough to keep out of prison. You should count yourself fortunate. If I didn't think you were interesting, I wouldn't be talking to you. I could snap my fingers and have you taken away. I felt myself start to sweat. The king seemed to be waiting for me to say something. I tried to pull together a sentence. I'm pretty confused. How should I address him? I decided to try for Earth royalty. Your Majesty. He eyed me speculatively. Mr. Modelon will do for now. You survived hiding on my ship for months. When we finally discovered you, we sentenced you to prison, where you should be right now. His eyes flashed in anger. Before we could transfer you, someone rescued you in a ship that looked remarkably similar to the fighters I recently purchased. And the person flying the ship looked like my youngest son. I didn't say anything. He knew everything about me, and I didn't think opening my mouth would improve the situation. My son is fighting for you. He believes you deserve a pardon. I don't understand why he thinks you're so important. Something doesn't add up. I swallowed hard. Where was he going with this? I had been staring down at the floor, but I raised my eyes to meet his. I wasn't going to go down without a fight. What do you mean, sir? Mr. Modelon, remember? What do you mean, Mr. Modelon? It wasn't only Alex. Anders and Avrin were defending you as well. What have you done to work your way into their hearts? He gazed at me in confusion, as if I were a puzzle he could solve if he stared at me long enough. He shook his head. But this isn't about the others, is it? The critical relationship is between you and Alex. Is it? I wouldn't betray him. I hadn't before, and I wasn't willing to now. The door of the docking bay opened. Alex ran in, shouting, followed closely by Gwen. I stared at them through the window. Could they see his father in here? Priya, you can't leave me. Alex's loud voice echoed through the empty landing bay. I glanced nervously at his father. You know I love you. I'll face them and explain everything. Stay here. His voice sounded anguished. I don't know what sort of apology I had expected from him, but a few sentences were enough for me. 
His only option was revealing everything. In an instant, I had forgiven him completely. The door burst open and Alex charged in. He stopped immediately after seeing his father and me in the middle of our intimate conversation. Hello, father. Alex, I believe you have some explaining to do. Alex. What was Priya doing with my father? I wasn't mentally prepared for this. When I realized Priya had left, I contacted Gwen immediately. She had been talking with Priya last night and had some idea of where she was. Gwen had caved immediately, telling me everything about the plan they concocted. She felt that if I was prepared to tell everyone the truth, it was better than Priya leaving me. The mere thought left me shaking in a cold sweat. I had run all the way to the docking bay hoping I could stop her. I couldn't lose her again. We were supposed to be together, and if I had to confess things to my family, I was ready. I tried to catch my breath and figure out what was going on, but there were too many things to think about. Sometimes, the simplest approaches were best. What are you doing here, father? He tilted his head to the side and watched me. I wanted to talk to your stowaway. I was still out of breath from my run. I preferred to avoid confrontation, but not if it meant losing Priya. She's not my stowaway. I moved beside her and took her hand. I closed my eyes for a second, gathering my courage, then looked my father straight in the eye as I spoke. She's my bondmate, and we're getting married. Priya's head shot around. The marriage was news to her. I held up a titanium armband which I hoped to clasp around Priya's bicep. Father's eyes darted to the band I held. I didn't think my son could be so irresponsible. I didn't know what I had expected for being honest with him. I was prepared to shout back at him, but before I could speak, Priya had stepped forward and started defending me. Excuse me? Her dark eyes flashed. Who do you think you are to talk to him this way? From what I know of Alex, he's the most responsible of your sons, next to Arnon. That's true, Gwen murmured behind us. I had forgotten she was here. He's always done what you asked without making waves. Now he's done exactly one thing for himself, and you can't handle it. She poked him in the chest. It's bullshit, and you know it. My father looked like he was going to explode, but unexpectedly started laughing and couldn't stop. I had never seen him like this before. When he regained his composure, he spoke. Miss Bat, I realize why Alex likes you. Priya wasn't going to be deterred by his sudden charm. I think you owe someone an apology. She crossed her arms over her chest. My father smiled as if she were joking before realizing she wasn't. I thought I saw his eyes getting misty. Was he about to cry? It has been so long. I'd almost forgotten how wonderful women could be. He straightened and looked me in the eye. Alex, I'm sorry for insulting you and your fiancé. Please accept my apology. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Was my father doing something just because Priya told him to? If I could, I would right every wrong I've committed since your mother died. His voice choked up. Especially to you, Alex. The baby. He looked me in the eyes, his face filled with sorrow. Your mother made me a better man. I have missed her every day. The pain ruined me, but you boys banded together and refused to be knocked down. His eyes were empty and lonely. You left me out of your little circle, but maybe that was for the best. I never knew my mother. The old pain was returning, and it felt worse than ever. I never knew my father, either. I think losing you was harder. You were right there, and I couldn't have you in my life. There were tears in his eyes. I'm sorry, Alex, he whispered. 
What was I supposed to do? I glanced at Priya, and she nodded her head at my father. I looked at the old man, worn out from the pain. We had left him out of the family because he had hurt us so much. It seemed cruel in retrospect. I knew how hard it was to be without Priya, and I had a window into his pain. Could I leave him hanging and keep fighting old battles? I couldn't. I forgive you, Father. I imagined I could see a weight lift off of him. He looked lighter, happier, and younger. A sense of relief came over me. Bless you, Alex. My father came to me and hugged me. I couldn't believe he had realized his mistakes and apologized. I felt as though I had been waiting my whole life for this moment. I had no illusions that all the years of neglecting me could vanish in a second, but it was a start. After a move in the right direction, we might someday be a proper family again. Briar, I apologize for the pain you suffered at the hands of the prison authorities. Bless you for your honesty and sharp tongue. Call me Crindall. All my other daughters-in-law do. I snorted, and she grinned. He climbed out of the ship. I believe a shotgun wedding is in order. Chapter 20 Alex Avrin sat across the table from me. I didn't know if I could believe what he was saying. I had one hand on Priya's flat stomach. She still didn't show any sign of the child we both knew was there. We had been married for two weeks and the baby was two months along. Priya had healed completely after the debacle on Graindell. It hadn't been as hard as I imagined to tell everyone about our bond. Arnon hadn't been disappointed in me at all. There had been an ocean of difference between how I thought they would react and how they had actually reacted. Instead of going to Father's usual planned gathering, we had invited him to Sunday dinner instead. It was awkward and would take us a while to adjust, but I felt it was a step in the right direction to get our family back on track. At the dinner, I came clean about everything and told everyone to stop bossing me around. After a few laughs, they said they would try and hadn't realized what they were doing to me. My thoughts were drawn back to the conversation as Arnon spoke again. Long story short, I think we can do some genetic engineering which will be active within one generation. Avrin nodded his head. Arnon glanced at Jane. The twins played quietly on the floor nearby, mumbling something to each other in their private language. And after you make the changes, we won't feel anything when we take our wings out? He looked skeptical. I didn't say anything. If Avrin could perform such a miracle, why didn't he ever talk about it before? Avrin looked up at the ceiling. I've been mulling over the idea for a while, but when I saw Alex on Graindell, I became extremely motivated. He launched into a complicated explanation that made my head hurt. Our eyes started to glaze over. He finished by saying something we could all understand. I believe I can make it work for adults, but the most important thing is to alter the genetic code in all the fathers. Anders' eyebrows flew up. That way our children will never experience the pain we've had to go through. He took Gwen's hand and she smiled broadly at him. Exactly. Do you think you could start now? Arnon frowned. You could have said something about this a long time ago. Avrin shook his head. I don't know how to do it, but I think I know someone who does. I had a question. Would it be possible to modify the genes in the womb? I don't know about in utero, but once the babies are born, we can treat them before their wings emerge. Avrin looked from Priya to Gwen to Elle and finally glanced at Jane. They were all pregnant three of them for the first time, and Jane for the second. The women were but a microcosm of the ship's inhabitants, and Ozim was well on its way to repopulation. Even so, Avrin's proposal created unbelievable possibilities. We loved flying, 
but it came at a cost and had been a very hard sell when we wanted women to have our children. What's the guy's name? Airy had an innocent look on his face. Avrin looked mildly uncomfortable. It seemed like he was blushing. Well, she's a woman. She's from Earth, but she's been teaching at the University of Susan. Do you know her? A suspicious look crept over Airy's face. Who cares if he knows her or not? I hope he does. The real question is, will she come work with you? Arnon exchanged a look with Airy. Hang on, you guys. Avrin, what's her name? Anders sounded curious. Avrin hesitated for a moment. It's Vanessa Dwyer. There were groans from around the table. Avrin must have expected a reaction like this from us. Anyone but her. She's never going to help us. Anders looked dismayed. Do you think she has the answer to all our problems? She's the best molecular geneticist in the galaxy. Avrin shrugged. Who's Vanessa Dwyer? She seems to me more than a geneticist to you guys. Priya looked confused. Avrin used to date her, but he dumped her when they were both still in school. Airy glanced at Avrin while trying to stop himself from laughing. Avrin shook his head. You're oversimplifying things. It wasn't like that at all. Maybe I am, but do you really think Vanessa's going to leave a life on Susan to help you? I mean, help us? If she resists, I'll have to change her mind. I can convince her. Don't worry. I could tell from the tremor in his voice he wasn't overly confident in his powers of persuasion. Identical looks of disbelief passed around the table. I noticed Priya was giggling as she traded glances with the other women. I'm leaving soon to talk with her. You're going to Susan in person? Airy couldn't hide his longing to go there. Airy had always wanted to finish his degree in oceanography on Susan, but never had the chance. Face-to-face -face communication is still the best. Vanessa will never agree over a video call or hologram. Anders grinned. Is your plan to work your charm on her in person? Avrin pushed his hair off his forehead. I wouldn't put it that way. He was trying to keep his face expressionless. I'm going to give her the facts. She won't be able to resist the glory of discovering a cure to a crippling genetic problem. I heard some bitterness in his voice and wondered how badly things had ended between the two of them. More groans came from both the men and women. Don't mention the facts. Call it charm. Charmer. Maybe it would be best if you groveled. Try getting down on your knees. Avrin ignored the teasing. You don't know her like I do. She wants her name in the history books, and I have the perfect way to get it there. I'll convince her. If you manage to succeed, you'll be even more responsible for saving our race than these lovely ladies. Airy gestured at the women. That's saying something. You'd be my personal savior, I whispered, staring at my brother. Avrin nodded and looked back at me. That's the point. Jane sniffled, tears falling from her eyes. The silence which followed was broken when Gwen asked if anyone wanted to play a game of cards. We all joined in, but everyone was thinking about Avrin's proposal and what it would mean for our race. Priya Alex and I lay next to each other in bed, cuddling in the dark. I felt happy, safe, and content. We married soon after we explained everything to his father while we were in the shuttle. We were going to have a baby. His father seemed to be realizing the mistakes he made with his sons and was working to repair their relationships. I wanted my child to grow up with a grandfather who was present, active, and enthusiastic. It didn't look like we would be returning to Earth terribly often, but our baby needed to meet my parents. There were always holograms, but that wasn't the same thing as seeing someone face to face. We would need to resolve the issue at some point. Avrin's plan sounded fantastic. 
It wasn't a certainty by any stretch, but if our child could avoid the kind of pain the model and brothers had endured, a terrible burden would lift from my shoulders. Alex, what do you think about Avrin's proposal? I kept my voice to a whisper. I knew he wasn't asleep. I don't want to get my hopes up, but I can imagine what it would mean for our people. I don't like hyperbole, but this would truly be something that changed our lives forever. So you're not sure he and the other scientists can figure it out? While the problem has affected the Azim throughout recorded history, it would be quite an accomplishment. He took a deep breath. Even if it's possible, they're going to have problems with each other. Avery spoke with me after dinner. He said he had never seen two people in love with each other like that before. Are you sure? What about Arnon and Jane, Ellen Avery, Gwen and Anders? What are you trying to say? Avrin's relationship happened before all of ours. Before Avery knew what was happening, it was over between them. Avrin wouldn't talk about it. All we know is that the breakup was not amicable. Avrin hasn't spoken with Vanessa since. This is starting to sound worse and worse. How can Avrin convince Vanessa to work with him? I have no idea, Priya. It seems like a long shot. Maybe they're different people now. People never really change, Alex. Maybe he can get her to come work with him. I don't know. It's Avrin's problem, not mine. I'm not going to hold my breath. I would be too disappointed if they didn't solve anything. I'm not going to think about it. How are you feeling? Alex definitely changed the subject to one thing we were endlessly fascinated with. Pregnancy. I'm tired, but I feel good. There's no nausea. He kissed me sweetly on the lips. We're lucky that everything worked out, Priya. I love you so much. I love you too, Alex. Nothing's ever going to keep us apart. Never. He pulled me to him and kissed me until I couldn't think straight. We're going to be together forever now. Everything was perfect. The End This has been Alien Prince's Mate, an Ozim novel. Written by Lisa Lace. Narrated by Paul Bryan and Kelly Morgan. Copyright 2017 by Lisa Lace. Production copyright 2017 by Lisa Lace. Audible hopes you have enjoyed this program.